with four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states. Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. After a car accident, what do you get when you call Mansion Ferretti? You get more experience from a local law firm with over 115 years of combined service. More respect from a team who treats clients like their own family. And more fight because we want you to get every dollar you deserve. Experience, respect, results. If you've been injured, that's what you want in your lawyer. And that's what you'll get when you call us. Car accident? Get more with Mansion Ferretti. 304-264-8505. I pre-planned my funeral to make it easier on my family. They were relieved to know I'll get just what I want. My family actually thanked me for taking matters into my own hands. Turns out having this awkward conversation wasn't awkward at all. Pre-planning is my choice. There are certain things about me my family may not know. Now they won't need to guess. The choices are yours. The peace of mind is theirs. Pre-plan your funeral with Brown Funeral Homes and everything will be taken care of. Find out more online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm gonna call my parents. Dad, come over. The purse gets done. <laughs> the Traeger Connected Experience. Everything you need for epic flavor. And then some. Shop now and save at Orsini's today. <laughs> The following is a special sports broadcast presentation of Talk Radio WRNR Martinsburg. Play ball! It's time for the fun and excitement of West Virginia high school baseball. Today's game is being brought to you by Parsons Ford, Rocks, the Hefley Motor Company, the Wagner Law Firm, Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Companies, the Marius Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, the Skinner Law Firm, the Browns Funeral Home and Cremations, Robert Fields and Sons. Orsini's, Carter Myers Automotive, Century 21 Modern Realty Results, The Palace Lounge, Cody's Auto Body, WVU Medicine, Berkeley and Jefferson Medical Centers, Hagerstown Ford, The Berkeley County Health Department, Smallwood and Small Insurance, Mother Shuckers, L.A. Roberts Jewelers, The Dutch Miller Auto Group, and The Mansion Freddy Law Firm. And now for the pregame show. Let's go out to the field and join our talk radio WRNR broadcast team. We welcome you here to a windy spring mills as apologize for some technical difficulties as everything is just blowing away right now. But hopefully you can hear us and by us, I mean me, as uh, here at Spring Mills, things just about ready to get started between Martinsburg and Spring Mills. Nick Verzellini and Dylan Bishop, our cameraman here as well, for EPAC baseball action. The Cardinals enter the game. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. How can you live more fully during a serious illness? Dottie tells how Hospice of the Panhandle helped her family. My brother Speedy became the base commander after he had been in the Air Guard for a few years and then became a general. 
He was the type of guy that would take people under his wing. Speedy developed a form of brain cancer, and he ended up coming to Hospice of the Panhandle, and he wanted to be around his friends, and Hospice of the Panhandle made that possible. He had over 200 visitors when he was here, and one of Speedy's last wishes was to fly over the Shenandoah Valley, and Hospice of the Panhandle helped me make that possible for him. I don't think there was one person that didn't bend over backwards to make sure that my brother was comfortable, and they would ask me, how are you doing? Hospice of the Panhandle, thank you so much for treating us like family. Live on with expert care from Hospice of the Panhandle. Learn more at hospiceotp.org or call 304-264-0406. We are the Skinner Brothers. Most folks only need a lawyer once or twice in their lives. And when they're injured or in an accident, most people don't know what to do. We get it. It can be overwhelming. Nobody likes to be told, you need a lawyer. But that's why we're here. We want to get you back to your normal life and help you recover. So if you or loved one has been in an accident, give us a call. Let us figure out how we can get you compensation. Reach us at SkinnerWins.com or Google Skinner Lawyers. We'll treat you like family. At Carter Myers Automotive, what we do today will tomorrow become what we've done. That's why owners just do more no longer defines us. Our work is never done because what we live by doesn't have a finish line. We care. Our company of owners is moving lives forward every day by finding more ways to care before, during, and after your purchase. Because when you're happy, so are we. Carter Myers Automotive. Proud to be the owners who just care more. We welcome you back here to Spring Mills. We apologize for some of those technical difficulties. Right as we were about to go on air, the wind just went berserk and everything kind of blew all over and then I hit some buttons and did some things but everything appears to be all right now hopefully the wind uh, calms down a little bit but let's go ahead and jump into our coaches and interviews brought to you by Parsons Ford located at 1400 Shepherdstown Road and online at ParsonsFord.com they became number one by making you number one first Parsons and our pregame show is brought to you by the Skinner Law Firm, Accident and Injury Lawyers, representing accident and injury claims for over 50 years. Go to SkinnerWins.com. Let's go ahead and hear from Coach Aaron Byler and Coach Brad Barrett for this baseball game. Some improvement, and when you look at your record, it's a bit deceiving with some of the games. Here with the head coach of the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Aaron Byler, coach, uh, coming in, coming off the win uh, the other day against Mercersburg, and overall it's been a good week for your team. Uh, what have you liked from the team this week? Yeah, I just like their energy. Um, you know, it's it's been a lot of games in a row, and I think we've had good energy throughout. Our starting pitching's been good, and our bats have stayed hot, and defense has been playing well, so we just hope all that continues. Spring Mills today, a team that give you, gave you guys a good game early in the year, and uh, despite their record, they've been a team that's clearly shown to be competitive, knock off a few teams. So uh, what have you seen from them so far this year, and what are some things you want to build on from the first performance against them? Well, uh, they gave us everything we wanted in that first game, and, and I think they're probably the most improved team in the entire EPAC. So uh, they're playing well. Credit to their coaching staff uh, for what they got them doing right now. And, you know, it's going to be a, a day game in front of their school, uh, so I'm sure they'll be excited to go. And we have to be able to match that energy and, and play well. You mentioned a day game on a Friday, not a typical thing for your team, but you just had a day game on the Wednesday. So uh, does that affect things at all, uh, coming out here on a Friday afternoon opposed to maybe a Friday night, but it should still have kind of a Friday night atmosphere with the students coming out? Yeah, you know, we talk to them all the time about adversity and handling different situations. And we had to play at 3.30 on Wednesday uh, because National Honor Society, we have to play at 1.30 today uh, to honor their uh, playing in front of the school. And it actually worked out really well for us because once this game's over, we're going to get on a charter bus and go to Greenbrier and play two tomorrow. So kind of kind of like a get-out-of-town game, you know, get this one in and, and get to Greenbrier. Today, Christian Alter going for you guys in a start. Uh, you've seen a lot of him out of the bullpen, seen him some in, in starts as well. But uh, what do you like about Christian so far this year? And, you know, you've said it all the time, he's kind of your favorite pitcher. 
Yeah, I mean, Christian fills his own. I mean, if, I, I don't know if you looked at his stats, but he's 5-0 and with a 0 ERA. So, uh, you know, that's pretty impressive. A couple of those wins were in relief. Um, but, you know, he's very capable. I think our defense likes playing behind him because he fills the zone and, and hopefully we'll make the plays behind him. Offensively this year, it's been a good mix of finding ways to get on base, moving the guys over, but also some power in your lineup. You had Oviedo hit a home run the other day. Boobers hit a few home runs. So uh, just from the lineup perspective, what are some things you'll try to do against Spring Mills today? Uh, we won't do anything that we haven't been trying to do, and, and what we preach to them is try to put pressure on, on defenses. If, if you can get guys on, get them over and get them in and, and create a little bit of havoc on the base pass, you know, you're going to have success in high school baseball. So it's all about winning the free base game, get, find a way to get on first, doesn't matter how that is, and find a way to get them around. Everybody's got to do their job, and you know, I think we've proven that we'll lay a bunt down one through nine, and we've got to make sure everybody buys into that. And like we tell them, do your job, and, and good things will happen. All right, Coach, thank you. Good luck tonight. Thanks, Nick. Here with the head coach of the Spring Mills Cardinals, Brad Barrett. Coach, uh, your team's 3-10 and 10 on the year, but it's definitely shown some improvement. And when you look at your record, it's a bit deceiving with some of the games you've had and how close you've played. Uh, what are some things you've liked about the guys so far and the competitiveness that they've shown? I mean, we're competing. You know, our record doesn't show that, but, you know, I mean, I think our last six, seven losses, you know, we've lost by maybe a total of like 10, 11 runs. So we're competing. We just got to get over that little small hump, and I honestly think once we do that, we're going to win those games. And... What do you think are some things that you can do better to get over that hump? You know, handle the mental part of the game. You know, we're, we're making mistakes, which is human. That's not, that's normal. But we gotta we gotta control the mental mistakes. You know, base running is a big problem right now. We gotta fix that. You know, obviously put runners on base. You know, see what we can do, execute that kind of stuff. But you know, we're just we're gonna do what we can. Martinsburg today, a team that's off to a phenomenal start when you look at them. But you guys gave them a great game early in the year, so uh, a little bit different in terms. Of you don't have Cumley pitch in, but. Um, how do you think your team will attack today, knowing that you can compete with this team, even though record-wise it looks like it would be a mismatch? I mean, Bryce is a great guy. He's out there. He's probably our toughest kid on the team. He's going to go out there and give us everything he can on the mound. Um, you know, we don't really look at anything as far as records go. I mean, this is an EPAC game. You never know who's going to win these games. They're always tough. They're always real competitive, and they're always real close. We'll see how it goes. Afternoon game as well, and you'll, get, you'll have some students out here to watch your team and, and support the guys. Uh, what do you like about having these afternoon games, and uh, how does that help? I mean, where else would you rather be, right? Playing a baseball game at 1.30 in the afternoon with probably three, 400 students watching you. So it's a great atmosphere. It's great to get our kids up here, have some support. You know, it's somewhat decent weather. So we'll see what we can do and hopefully uh, we'll get a win for our guys. Anything else you're looking for out of your team today to get a win? Just toughness again, right? Got to compete. All right, Coach, thank you. Good luck tonight. Thank you. That was Coach Brad Barrett of the Spring Mills Cardinals as well as uh, Martinsburg head coach Aaron Byler here on the Skinner Law Firm Countdown to First Pitch, representing accident and injury claims for over 50 years. Go to SkinnerWins.com. We'll take a break. On the other side of that break, we'll bring you more here on the pregame show as we move closer to First Pitch. By the way, though, before we take that break, Brandon Montgomery just awarded the Copenhaver Scholarship here as it is Scholarship Day, I believe, is what they are uh, calling this here at Spring Congrats, Mills, Brandon. which leading to about three to 400 students coming out and, and watching the game, like Coach Barrett said. So we'll take a break. On the other side of that break, we'll continue here on the pregame show and get ready for first pitch. This is uh, West Virginia High School Baseball and Talk Radio WRNR and, and TV 10. We live in a great country. If you or someone you know suffers from the disease of addiction, help is available from the Berkeley County Quick Response Team with peer recovery coaches and support promptly to the homes of those who've recently experienced an overdose. This collective effort towards recovery brings resources and services to the community, including naloxone and treatment options. Call 304-267-1313 or visit the Berkeley County Recovery Resource Center at 800 Emmett Rouse Drive, Martinsburg. The Berkeley County Quick Response Team is funded through a DHHR grant with the Berkeley Morgan County Health Department. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. 
I pre-planned my funeral to make it easier on my family. They were relieved to know I'll get just what I want. My family actually thanked me for taking matters into my own hands. Turns out having this awkward conversation wasn't awkward at all. Pre-planning is my choice. There are certain things about me my family may not know. Now they won't need to guess. The choices are yours. The peace of mind is theirs. Pre-plan your funeral with Brown Funeral Homes and everything will be taken care of. Find out more online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. April is National Donate Life Month. WV Medicine is joining the effort to raise awareness for organ donation. Did you know that more than 100,000 people are waiting for life-saving organ transplants? One donor can save up to eight people through organ donation, provide sight for two people through cornea donation, and restore health for more than 75 people through tissue donation. Join WV Medicine and help spread awareness about the gift of donation. And if you haven't registered, visit registerme.org. We welcome you back here to Spring Mills High School. Nick Verzellini here for Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. We'll bring you the starting lineups brought to you by Trips Flooring. Not sure where to go or who to trust for your flooring needs. Call Trips Flooring at 304-229-7009 or online at tripsfloorsanding.com. Starting for the visiting Bulldogs, leading off and playing center field, number 25, Isaac Grove. Batting second, the shortstop, number five, Carson Boober. Batting third, the third baseman, number 24, Braden Oviedo. Batting fourth, the pitcher, Christian Alter, number seven. And batting fifth, the second baseman, number eight, Ben Risenweber. Batting sixth, the designated hitter, number three, Owen Rupenthal. Batting seventh, the first baseman, number 27, Jameer Brown. Batting eighth, the catcher, number 20, Braden Edwards. And rounding out the lineup in right field, number two, Keegan Everhart. A little bit of rain starting to come down here at Spring Mills. Just a very slight misty rain. Not even really a full rain yet, but hopefully that holds off here as we are, of course, outside. And getting ready to see in the pitching circle, or on the the mound, I should say, Bryce Anders doing the pitching and Aiden Eichelberger doing the catching. Our uh, battery is brought to you by Cody's Auto Body at 851 Wilson Street in Martinsburg. Call 304-901-4777 or visit their Facebook page. And our weather was brought to you by CMA's Martinsburg and Winchester dealerships. Proud to be owners who just care more. As temperatures in the 60s, but uh, definitely... And a little bit of rain throughout the day. So that pitch called strike. As the rain uh, picking up here. And the next pitch to Grove is low for a ball. One ball, one strike. And um, our first pitch was brought to you by the Mirrors Group and Ameriprise Financial. Advisors, John Everson, Phil McCoy, stop by 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, call 304-263-4343. Our top of the first inning is brought to you by the Brown Funeral Home and Cremations, Robert Fields and Sons, proudly serving our area since 1880. Two balls and a strike. The next pitch to Grove is a called strike two. We apologize again for the Technical difficulties here. Batting second for the visitors. The shortstop, number five. How you doing, Trip? Good. Carson Hoover. So, Trip Tobin now joining us here. Uh, again, we don't have a camera, it appears, right now, but uh, not sure if we're even on the air, to be honest, Trip, but. <laughs> Um, Grove draws a walk, throw over, not in time. So, a little early starting for us, huh? Messed everybody up. Yeah, I guess that's what it is. Where's your camera at? Having an HDMI issue. 
Throw down to second, not in time, or heads into the outfield, and Grove will head to third. So Martinsburg with a runner in scoring position for Carson Buber. Just like that, he got a a walk. They get him over, and they get him on, get him over, like we talked about all year long. Martinsburg does, and so uh, Grove's a big a big base stealing guy here. So Martinsburg quickly, the man on third, nobody out. The 1-0 pitch to Buber has popped up into shallow center field, and that will fall in for a base hit. Grove will score easily from third, and the Bulldogs take an early 1-0 lead. Grove field looks like he might have uh, tweaked his hamstring there a little bit. He's not feeling that well, so see if that translates into uh, him taking the rest of the day off, but he doesn't seem to be feeling too well right now. So I'll bring... It was just a bad luck there, single for the pitcher there for Spring Mills, Anders, and uh, I believe that uh, you know that ball just the wind took it and just stopped, knocked it down. Brady Oviedo now coming to the plate for Martinsburg, and the next pitch to Oviedo is outside for ball one. So runner on first for the Bulldogs. Looks like we got some camera. Yeah, that's good. We got plenty of wind here too. <laughs> Stuff's blowing everywhere. Throw over. Not in time. Gets away from Montgomery, who has awarded that scholarship before the game. So, uh, big crowd on hand with the students being kind of let out of class to come watch the game. And pitcher Enders checks the runner at first, and now delivers the next pitch. And Oviedo will send this one to the left center field. And right to the left fielder, uh, Stanley, or Sam Taylor out there and left to make the catch. Yeah, Sam Taylor out there. He's uh, getting DH for, I believe, here by for Stanley. But the uh, ball was hit pretty well, but the wind's blowing straight kind of in and to center field. Did, didn't have much of a chance. So that'll bring Christian Alter to the plate with Boober on first and a one nothing Bulldog lead here in the first inning. The field looks pretty good, not too much worse for the wear for the big rain we had last night. A lot of field work done, I'm sure. Yeah, as I got here, as the first baseman Montgomery and the runner on first uh, colliding there in Boober. But uh, as I got here, you know, they were working on the field. So yeah. they did a pretty good job, it looks like. If, uh, it wasn't in too bad a shape, but home plate was looking pretty rough. So here's one popped out toward right field and coming over to make the catch is J.P. Sweeney. And that will lead down number two. And Ben Risenweber coming to the plate as Alter flies out to right field. It was, Boober was off and running on the play. He had the retreat and uh, really no one was there covering the bag at the time so he didn't have to retreat too but too far as Montgomery uh, also gave chase initially for that, that, that ball that just barely got into right field. Uh, Look for Boober to, to take off here probably here with two outs. There he goes. Boober does go. The throw down to second again into center field. That will allow Boober to head to third. So Martinsburg taking advantage of some tough throws from the catcher, Eichelberger, and some errors leading to runners taking extra bases trip. Yeah, throw just uh, completely sailed just like the first one. Uh, Come up in the wind, or come up throwing, and it just sailed to the first base side and out into center field. Not a chance for anybody. But once again, Marsburg takes two bases off the stolen base. Boober takes his lead past third and throw as well inside to Ben Rise and Weber. Not a great day for baseball. <laughs> no, no, not not really. What Always a good day for baseball. Right. Just not a great day for baseball. Windy and rainy a little bit. Now the rain has gone away, which is good. The next pitch here by Risen, or two Rising Webbers hit on the ground towards short. Comley comes up throwing to first. Montgomery makes the stretch and makes the play for the final out of the inning. But the Bulldogs do get one. They strand one as well. We'll head to the second, <laughs> or bottom of the first, I should say. It's Martinsburg one, Spring Mills nothing. We're back in 60 seconds. Attention, West Virginians. 
Patrick Morrissey is the one proven conservative running for governor. With an unmatched record of delivering victories for our state, conservative Republican Patrick Morrissey has been endorsed by the NRA, stood up against federal overreach, fought and sued Joe Biden to protect West Virginia jobs, and defended our values against the far-left agenda. When Biden screws West Virginia, I sue Biden, and West Virginia wins a lot. I'm Attorney General Patrick Morrissey. I fought against the deep state and won to protect our jobs, defended our Second Amendment rights, upheld the sanctity of life, protected our kids from the woke left and their radical agenda. I'm the only proven conservative running and was the first to endorse Trump in this race. Paid for by Morrissey 2024. Patrick Morrissey is the one proven conservative running for governor. We welcome you back here to Spring Mills High School. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Trip Tobin. one nothing Bulldogs as we enter the bottom of the first inning. Christian Alter on the mound for Martinsburg doing the catching will be Braden Edwards, our starting battery again, brought to you by Cody's Auto Body, the 51 Wilson Street in Martinsburg. Call 304-901-4777 or visit their Facebook page. We'll give you the Spring Mills lineup brought to you by Trips Flooring. Not sure where to go or who to trust for your flooring needs. Call Trips Flooring at 304 229 Seven zero zero nine or online at tripsforsanding.com. Starting and leading off, the pitcher is Bryce Anders batting second. The shortstop Jacob Cumley batting third. The right fielder J.P. Sweeney batting fourth. The center fielder Braylon Swartz or Bryland Swartz batting fifth. The third baseman number nine Trump Power batting sixth. The Catcher, Aiden Eichelberger, batting seventh, the designated hitter, Stanley, batting eighth, the first baseman, number 13, Montgomery, and batting ninth, the second baseman, Wysocki. It does appear that Jackson Steen is taking over in left field and uh, moving Logan Wilt to center, so I would assume that Jackson Steen has entered the game for uh, the leadoff batter, as it grew for Martinsburg. It's not good to see as Grove uh, got on with that leadoff walk and then appears to be out of the game now, so hopefully everything all right. There is the first pitch from Alter, misses the zone for ball one. The next pitch, a breaking ball called a strike. Alter out on the mound, 5-0 this year. He's got a couple starts for wins. He's got to come in and take over a few games to get the win, and uh, has just... That pitch there gets away from him. He hits the leadoff batter Anders in the back. That curveball didn't have much break on it, and Anders just stood and took it like as he should. Yeah, so Spring Mills has a chance to answer. See Coach Barrett telling uh, Anders to read the ball down, maybe giving the bunt signal here is uh, is, is what you would you would generally tell your batter. Your Cumberland runner. will bunt, and it goes foul. You could see Barrett right, going across the field to uh, read that ball down, which is something you generally tell your batters when your your swingers, or excuse me, your runners, when the guy's in the in the box there, uh, making sure that bunt goes down instead of up for a double play. So, um, one run game here, number two batter, you know, expect the bunt. Oviedo's all the way up. Comely this time will bunt, gets a good one down the line. Oviedo will barehand it and throw to first in time for the out, but Spring Mills does advance the runner to second base. Yeah, nice job. It was a it was a pressure bunt. It, it wasn't bunted hard. OV80 he had to come all the way in, get it, make a play. Nice job by Boober to come over and cover third to uh, keep Anders at second. So I'll bring the right fielder, J.P. Sweeney, to the plate. The runner in scoring position for Spring Mills, a team that's struggled to put up runs this season when they have been able to. They've been able to get wins because their pitching has overall been pretty good as this one gets away from the catcher Edwards and allow the runner to advance the third. So Cardinals have a great opportunity here, Trip, to tie the game. Yeah, the Cardinals played the Bulldogs really tight the last time coming through a really well of a game. And uh, in Martinsburg, uh, uh, you know, come away with that win. But uh, definitely the Cardinals of uh, Spring Mills showing that they will compete this year. They've competed in a lot of games. They've been close to a lot of games. This one hit well out toward left field, tracking it Steen. and making the play is Jackson Steen, and now that will be deep enough, though, to score the run. 
So Anders comes around to score after the hit by pitch, and Spring Mills has tied the ball game up at one. Yeah, that, that run there uh, was sort of indicative of how Martinsburg plays the game. You know, guy gets on early, uh, they get him over, and then uh, take advantage of a, a ball that got to the backstop there, a dirt ball, and um, got a sack fly. So good job by Spring Mills to answer there in the top of the first, uh, answer Martinsburg's run to the top of the first. J.P. Sweeney hit that home run in the uh, top of the first at Martinsburg off of Lane to Water. As this one, and here he gets the sacrifice RBI to get the Cardinals on the board here to tie the game. Swartz coming to the plate, center fielder. The next pitch from Christian Alter is popped up into left. Coming over and making the play is Steen for the final out of the inning. So Nothing's easy out there today. Yeah. The no, wind, wind, the wind, is that wind was blowing. It was a tough play, and that will end the inning. We're tied at one after the first. We end the second with the Bulldogs coming to the plate. This is West Virginia High School Baseball and Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Life is evolving. Over the past decade, the way we do almost everything has changed. Get on your phone, see something you like, click on it, and it shows up at your door. Why should the way you have your car serviced be any different? Why waste your time going to a dealership service department when Hager Sound Ford and Hancock Chevrolet will come to you? They service all makes, all models, and offer full parts and labor warranties. Hagerstown Ford and Hancock Chevrolet will come to your door or office and service your vehicle while you're doing what you need to be doing, conducting that business meeting or mowing the lawn. Why take time out of your busy schedule when you don't have to? Hagerstown Ford and Hancock Chevrolet's friendly, knowledgeable staff will come to you where you live or where you work for full service maintenance. From oil changes to tire rotations, brakes, batteries, multi-point inspections, they handle it all. Hagerstown Ford and Hancock Chevrolet is committed to delivering the best of the best to their customers. Trust them to service your vehicle where you're at, at home or at work. Skip the time-consuming and terminal wait at the dealership. Schedule your appointment at FordofHagerstown.com or HancockChevy.com. We welcome you back here to Spring Mills High School. The bottom of the first was brought to you by Orsini's Home Store, not just a supply and store any longer. Visit them at 360 Act Wilson Way in Martinsburg or online at Orsini's.com. The top of the second, though, is brought to you by the Heffley Motor Company, located at 993 Hedgesville Road in Martinsburg, a nice place to do business. One to one, our score here as we begin the second inning. Nick Verzelli tripped open here. Dylan Bishop, our cameraman, and back in the studio is Kyle McLaughlin. His own Rippenthal will lead things off for the Bulldogs, and the first pitch from Anders hits the zone for strike one. Got ourselves a matinee. Big game tonight over in Washington with Jefferson and Washington playing later this evening. Great day for EPAC baseball. Not a great weather day. This one a called strike two. On Rupenthal. Yeah, some big matchups. Surprisingly, no Hedgesville Musselman today with how the schedule works out, but. Everybody's got a big weekend ahead of them. Swinesburg's yeah. headed off the Greenbrier. Pitch misses for a ball, so one ball, two strikes. Our EPAC baseball roundup brought to you by Rocks Local Markets with convenient locations around the Eastern Panhandle. Rocks, fast, fresh, friendly. As this one misses high. For a ball. Yeah, you talk about the weather, and everybody can, I'm sure, hear it in the microphones. But I think it, it, if you had to pick one position, you know, that, that's, that, that uh, you know, other than the outfield, but the pitchers, it's, it's really tough to pitch in a, in a high wind. You know, it's just feel like you, feel like you got a, a, you know, a, a headwind coming at you. You feel like you just don't have your velocity. It's just, just a tough thing to pitch, you know, in, in this kind of weather. I know it's tough when the outfielders getting to read, but, I mean, you know, pitching every pitcher, you know, 100 pitches are going to be affected by that wind, it feels like. And that, they just it's really tough to pitch in this wind. 3-2 is popped up towards center field. Going back is Swartz, and Swartz makes the play for the first out. I thought you were going to say the position you want to be playing is the DH. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's certainly where you want to be, you know. Owen gets to hit and then go in and get out of the wind um, and not have to deal with the wind when the ball's in the air or trying to make those plays. But, uh, you know, so far the outfielders have done a good job of, of reading it. The ball is, is pushing from uh, left to right. And as of yet, they've made those plays. Jameer Brown will come in. He'll take that first pitch for a call strike one. Student section's out, so we do have a crowd on hand, even though the weather's not the best. Next pitch to Brown is a ball. 
James Franklin behind the plate. Keith Allison on the on the bases. Cardinals are in their St. Louis Cardinal blue with the Cardinal bat across the front. Next pitch, low for a ball. We start saying the Bulldogs are in their or their Orioles orange. Orioles orange, yeah. I'm a little tired from watching that extra inning game last night. <laughs> yeah, it was a good game though. Yeah, the the, the replay was the uh, undoing of of the There's Red Sox. Big swing and miss for strike two. The double play replay gets, yeah. gives Mark gives them another chance. Next thing you know, six runs later. Well, apparently, actually, they, they the second base umpire never called him out, so he had it right the whole time. But Masson made a mistake and went to break. Yeah, because I got up and come back and what the heck? <laughs> Santander's hit a home run. There goes a home run. Yeah, three balls, two strikes. Here on Jameer Brown. And the next pitch is high and inside for ball four. So Brown will take his base with the walk. And Braden Edwards will come to the plate. Big catcher, number 20, with uh, Edwards. the trouble that's, that the Cardinals have had throwing runners out, you have to wonder here if uh, Jameer is going to go. Uh, Braden, you know, RBI guy hits the ball hard. You kind of probably not want to give up this out if you're Martinsburg. It's already in the game, but... We've seen Martinsburg bunt one through nine, so uh, Cardinals are going to have to be on their toes expecting it. Um, see if Martinsburg feels like they can steal that base or if they think they have to, you know, start bunting here uh, it, or feel like they have to bunt here early to get them over. Another throw over, Brown diving back in safely. Now you wonder if Anders is thinking that same thing. Like, yeah. we'll keep them close here, not allow them to get a big lead. He's going. And he yeah. showed like he was going to go, but decided not to, and the pitch misses for a ball. Yeah, he gave the he took the first two steps and held up. A little fake steal. Yeah, Mass had went to break on me. I come back, and the, the, scan of the Orioles had a two-run you know, two homer. Luckily, you didn't miss that, right? Yeah. Here's the pitch high for another ball. Two balls, no strengths here on Edwards. We apologize again. Having some difficulties. I think the weather... Could be affecting some of our equipment here. We got a light sprinkle. Wind blowing like crazy. Throw over. Not in time. Jameer Brown down there at first. He had the lead off. I'm sorry, the one out walk. We need one of those wind indicators to see how fast, how hard the wind is blowing. <coughs> that one misses high for another ball. So 3 0 count is. Bryce Anders doing what he can out there on the mound with this weather. And the next pitch from Anders high and inside for ball four. So it's back-to-back walks after he got the fly out to begin the inning. Now bring Keegan Everhart to the plate. Keegan. Everhart. Great opportunity for to, to sack bunt here as we're going to get a timeout. This is the pitching coach Hammond uh, is coming out to talk to Anders. Getting a little more rain now. If anyone took off the afternoon or got off early on Friday, they're sitting in their chair. Maybe this, maybe all this winds sounds like white noise. They're probably sleeping. <laughs> Well, it looks like our camera is back now as the rain picks up a little bit here. And we're going to ruin all Mike's equipment. I do have trash bags in the car. I may have to go run out to them and go get them. I thought the rain was over, didn't you? Look at the sun's out in left field. At yeah, least, so at least maybe, it's brighter. Maybe it'll go away here soon. It's a weird rain. It almost feels like somebody's, like, pouring water on us, like spraying water on us as Everhart takes that one for a called strike. Yeah, back-to-back uh, walks there, probably a take. Maybe now you could possibly expect a bunt out of Martinsburg. Uh, third baseman for uh, Spring Mills have to stay back and, and, and hold, hold his position there. Runners on first and second for the Bulldogs here with one out. Trump is going to have to hold ground there as Montgomery's up at first. R.J. Brown running. Running for the catcher. 
The next pitch misses low and inside for a ball. So Everhart, the nine-hole hitter, trying to possibly drive in some runs here. Now we're getting a driving rain. <laughs> the next pitch is high for another ball. Again, like I said, I, I just wouldn't want to be on the mound right now. I, you know, it's just a tough place to be. You just feel like you don't have a lot of control, a lot of velocity. It's just nobody likes to pitch in the rain, I mean, in the wind. Definitely not in the rain. Next pitch, Everhart sends a slow roller past the shortstop and into left field. Oh. Brown slips on his way around third. Martinsburg top, caught in a tough situation, and Spring Mills doesn't take advantage. Oh, yeah. Wild play there, but Jameer Brown comes around to score <coughs> on the Everhart RBI single. Yeah, Everhart pushes the ball through. Uh, Jameer Brown slipped coming around third, had to retreat, but RJ was already coming. The throw came in to Cumley. Cumley had no idea that Jameer Brown was caught, uh, him and RJ. So Jameer just takes off for home, and uh, Cumley turns around to his surprise that there was even a chance for Jameer at home. And, uh just not a lot of communication there as to where the ball needed to be. And uh, we see some of the conditions now as Jameer Brown has come around the bases, fallen down and uh, created a little bit of a chaotic play there. And uh, Steen will come to the plate, lay down a bunt, the third a second, and a runner coming in to score there in Brown. Third and second goes into center field anyway. Now another runner coming home for the Bulldogs, and they get it in with Everhart. So well executed steal and then a poor throw down, but also probably shouldn't throw down with the runner on third. Runners on the corners. Martinsburg goes to the stolen second base. The throw goes into center field, and then Everhart comes around to score. So yeah, Brown and Everhart scoring on that one. It's now 4-1 to one Martinsburg. Martinsburg scores two runs on a double steal is uh, not something that's going to look going to show up well in the stat book. Uh, but great baseball IQ, baseball running. Uh, as soon as the ball got away, got into center field. Uh, Schwartz uh, hadn't quite come up for the backup. It squibbed away. It's not real hard. Everhart came up and just never stopped. Round and third. There's a called strike. Two balls and a strike here. So it's been a tough inning for. Spring Mills. Thank you. And the next pitch is high for another ball. Three balls and a strike here to Jackson Steen at the plate. Plate bases are now empty for Martinsburg. Anders. I'm sorry, Anders looking into his catcher and delivering the next pitch, and it just hits that outside corner for strike two. Steen left handed, taking over the leadoff spot here with Grove with the a little bit of a muscle uh, strain here. We're not sure exactly, but we know he looked like he was grabbing his hamstring there after that stolen base. That one misses high and outside for ball four, so Martinsburg draws another walk. If you're confused at home, the double steal, Everhart never stopped. He right. came from now first I all the way five. home, and, uh, of course, uh, R.J. Brown on third took off on the throw downs. He scored, and then Everhart never stopped on the throw that got into center field, and he just kept coming, and then once again caught Spring Mills by surprise again. Nice pitch here. High for a ball. 1-0 count. Runner on first base for the Bulldogs is Jackson Steen, who drew a walk. And a throw over, not in time. And we'll see if Martinsburg continues to try to put that pressure on. Steen, pretty good speed over there at first. He didn't see a steal from Jameer, um, you know, when he and he was on first with nobody uh, it's ahead a big of him. Lead. Pitch is low for a ball again. So the the problem is is I mean not the problem but the the, uh, the decision that to made by the coaching staff is will Anders find the strike zone right. or will we you know will he let us walk us on or will we take the chance of getting thrown out and giving him an out? Yeah, no reason to run yourself out of the inning when pitcher struggling to find the zone this one missing outside again so 3-0 count here and what has already been a three walk inning for martinsburg carson boober at the plate he had an rbi single his last time up 
two of those walks have scored with also with a single by Everhart who scored. Throw it at first a little bit closer that time. Sun coming out. Which would be nice if that would stay. Runner takes his lead off of first and the pitch here from Anders misses or hits the zone there inside as Boober taking all the way on 3-0. Oviedo do up. The zone expands a little bit on 3-0, doesn't it? Seems like it, yeah. This time the runner takes off. Boober slaps it in the right field. And coming over is the center fielder, Swartz, to make the play. Runner goes back to first. And there's two down. Hit it pretty well when it came off the bat. Just hung up there in that wind. Give Schwartz a chance, but did kept tailing away from Schwartz, like you said, in the right field as a, as if he just kept uh, you know, kept drifting and drifting with it and finally made the play out there uh, by center field. So you see, you see a little bit of a shift by the center fielder here on Oviedo as he's pulling the baseball. Uh, they're expecting him to pull the baseball as he's pulled himself. Uh, Schwartz has pulled himself yeah, about uh, three quarters of maybe half of the way into the gap over there in left field, but the right fielder didn't follow suit. Throw down to second as in there is Jackson Steen with the stolen base. That time the throw heading more toward the shortstop side yeah. than the second base side, which is kind of where we've seen most of the throws go so far from the catcher, Eichelberger. So Oviedo hitting for the Bulldogs, a runner on second base, two down here in the Top of the second inning, and that one misses low for a ball. He overcompensated a little bit there and got it on the other side of the bag, but uh, Steen got a great jump. He was in there. Even if the throw was on, he had beat it by a step. So good job by Steen doing his Isaac Grove impression of stealing bases. Next pitch is a called strike on the inside corner. Two balls and a strike here on Braden Oviedo, who flew out to left his first time up. Oviedo playing third base today. Runner takes his lead. And the next pitch, Oviedo sends it right up the middle into center field. That will get down for a base hit. Steen will come around to score from second, and the Bulldogs extend the lead out to 5-1. to one. So an RBI single for Braden Oviedo, and Martinsburg yeah, continues this big inning here, Trip. Yeah, I mean, I mean, who else would you rather have up with two outs and a man in scoring position than uh, – then the Martinsburg's two, three, f uh, four guys right now, they're just hitting the cover off the baseball and doing a great job of uh, of not leaving runners out there. And, you know, Martinsburg's just, a, a, you know, right now they're playing pretty well. Um, Coach Bowler would tell you that they haven't put seven innings together, but uh, they are playing, you know, good baseball when it comes to, you know, do doing the, the little things and uh, not leaving a lot of base runners on. Alter sends a ground ball to the pitcher, and the thrower to first is in time for the final out of the inning. But Martinsburg adds four. It's now Bulldogs five, Spring Mills one. So we head to the bottom of the second. This is West Virginia High School Baseball and Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Providing reliable protection since 1877, we are Farmers and Mechanic Insurance Companies. For over a century, we have been dedicated to provide dependable insurance protection and excellent customer service. We specialize in auto, home, farm, and business insurance. Our products are backed with personal, hands-on service. You can trust us to protect what matters most to you. For all of your insurance needs, there's Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Companies. We are the Skinner Brothers. Most folks only need a lawyer once or twice in their lives. And when they're injured or in an accident, most people don't know what to do. We get it, it can be overwhelming. Nobody likes to be told, you need a lawyer. But that's why we're here. We wanna get you back to your normal life and help you recover. So if you or a loved one has been in an accident, give us a call. Let us figure out how we can get you compensation. Reach us at SkinnerWins.com or Google Skinner Lawyers. We'll treat you like family. Bottom of the second inning is brought to you by the Berkeley County Health Department. Prevent, promote, protect, offering public, clinical, and environmental services at 122 Waverly Court in Martinsburg. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Trip Tobin, Dylan Bishop on camera, Tom McLaughlin back in the studio. Martinsburg 5, Spring Mills 1. 
Here's me head to the bottom of the second trip. Uh, Attention, West Virginians. Patrick Morrissey is the one proven conservative running for governor. With an unmatched record of delivering victories for our state, conservative Republican Patrick Morrissey has been endorsed by the NRA, stood up against federal overreach, fought and sued Joe Biden to protect West Virginia jobs, and defended our values against the far left agenda. When Biden screws West Virginia, I sue Biden and West Virginia wins a lot. I'm Attorney General Patrick Morrissey. I fought against the deep state and won to protect our jobs, defended our Second Amendment rights, upheld the sanctity of life, protected our kids from the woke left and their radical agenda. I'm the only proven conservative running and was the first to endorse Trump in this race. Paid for by Morrissey 2024. Patrick Morrissey is the one proven conservative running for governor. Trump's plan to stop woke gender ideology from poisoning our kids? We'll investigate Big Pharma and the big hospital networks that participate in sex transitions of minor children. And Big Pharma's lobbyists should be held accountable too. Like Pat Morrissey. As a D.C. lobbyist, Morrissey helped steer taxpayer funds to a gender transition clinic for children and got rich lobbying for a drug company peddling puberty blockers. Morrissey's family still owns the D.C. firm that lobbies for a child transition provider with a clinic in West Virginia. Pro-trans liberal lobbyist. That's Pat Morrissey. The pro-Trump conservative businessman, Chris Miller. Miller supports Trump's plan to protect our kids. As the father of an 11-year-old girl, you're darn right. I don't want her sharing a locker room with biological males. Woke doctors are literally practicing mutilation, not medicine, and they should be in prison. I'm Chris Miller, and I'll sign that law as governor. Paid for by Miller for Governor. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. The WVU Heart and Vascular Institute is pleased to announce that thoracic surgery with Dr. Shalini Reddy is now available in Martinsburg at WVU Medicine Berkeley Medical Center. Dr. Reddy has practiced thoracic surgery in the region for over eight years and offers robotic laparoscopic surgeries for the lungs, esophagus, and more. For more information about thoracic surgery in Martinsburg, check us out online at mywvuheart.com. We welcome you back here to hey Spring Mills, Martinsburg, uh, <coughs> getting out of the inning <coughs> trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure when we went off the air. I ate Michael Burger um, after Landon Trumpire's first pitch uh, fly out to right. Land, uh, ate Michael Burger, bounces the one off the left field fence over Steen's head for a double, uh, but he was stranded there after a uh, ground out to Boober. A 6 3 by Landon Staley, and then a uh, strikeout on a big curveball. Uh, was Brandon Montgomery goes down on a big curveball from Alter for for out number three, leaving Aiden Eichelberger, uh, courtesy runner Bradley Butts, actually was on second when the inning ended. So uh, Spring Mill showed a little life, but Martinsburg's defense and uh, Alter pitching uh, shut that down pretty quick. And here comes Martinsburg back. Yeah, we head back to the top of the third here with Martinsburg leading 5-1. to one. The top of the third inning is brought to you by the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, home of friends and family pricing. So, looks like number 17's pitching. J.P. Sweeney? Uh, I believe so, yeah. So that will do it then for Anders. And we'll see if it's a sweet 
Straight swap between Sweeney and Ryder. Anders on the mound. Or what else has changed for Spring Mills? It's like Cumbly's moved to third, maybe, number six. We'll get, get you here to second. Montgomery still on first. Like Wasaki is still at uh, at second. Number five, which is Anders, is at short, right? Cumbly's at third, so yeah. Sweeney has moved in from third. Cumbly's moved to third. And it looks like Anders has taken over at shortstop. All right. So this one misses high for ball one. I thought I had Sweeney in right, so I think then Trump Hour may be in right now, or did I just have that written down wrong? Uh, number six is on third. Right, I'm saying. Five. Oh, yeah, I'm not Sweeney sure. was in right, I believe. Oh, in the beginning of the game. Sorry yes. about that. Very possible, yeah. This one fouled off by Reisenweber. Yeah. Yeah, Cumley was at short to begin the game. Sweeney in right. Trump Hire has now went from third to right, All looks right. like. And Sweeney's came in to pitch from right, which, there we go. which moved Cumley to third. Rising weather will take this one inside for a ball. So we can set it with, uh, uh, looks like we have Cumley, Anders, Wasaki, uh, Montgomery around the infield with uh, Sweeney now on the mound throwing to Aiden Eichelberger. Nice pitch, a breaking ball, caught a strike. Nice pitch there from J.P. Sweeney. I think Sam Taylor in left, uh, Schwartz still in center where he started, and then we have Trump Irish move to right. Next pitch, another breaking ball, and Ryzen Weber fouls it off that time. Ben Ryzen Weber grounding out his first time up. Was the only batter to not come to the plate in that second inning. A big one for the Bulldogs as they pull away to make it a 5-1 to one game. Umpire getting a few balls here. Ryzen Weber fouled a couple off here. Count even at two balls and two strikes. The next pitch from the right-hander, Sweeney. Hits the zone for a called strike three. <clears throat> nice pitch there by Sweeney on the outer half. Called Ryzen Weber looking after a couple curveballs. So he's going to bring up Rupenthal. Between, now batting, number three. In between Coming innings, Coach Baller uh, came over and said that it looks, it appears that Possibly it's not just a stream, but possibly a pull. So prayers to Isaac Grove. Hopefully it's not uh, not the worst uh, scenario. Hopefully he'll get some treatment there and be back here shortly. Uh, yeah, he's having a great year. He's been their leadoff guy. Definitely don't want to see anybody get hurt. So pitch missing high there. Next one called strike. Ruben Fall, he flew out. To center field his first time up. And the next pitch from J.P. Sweeney, another breaking ball, line foul and out of play. Group of the left-handed hitting designated hitter today. Also play some first and do some pitching for the Bulldogs. Next pitch from Sweeney, high and outside for another ball. It was coming to us. Yeah. If Eichelberger got a glove on her, I think it would have come here in your lap. Well, that's the thing with this wind. The fence or the netting is kind of flying up a little bit. We may have to make a play today, Trip. You got to help her over here. Oh, we're going to push it back up. But, yeah, we have to. We do have a little gap here in the fence as it, the netting as it keeps getting pushed up. That one goes by the catcher, Eichelberger, for a ball. Sweeney got a little giddy up on his fastball here, even though the wind is not helping him any. Certainly, certainly not a uh, a tailwind. Uh, the wind is kind of going, like I said, from uh, left to right across the diamond, third to first. Next pitch, head out toward left center, chasing after it is Swartz and Taylor, and it's going to hit off the glove and fall in. And Rowan Rubenfall standing on second base. Yeah, we see that. You know, I'm not sure. Taylor was there. The wind was blowing. He kept drifting. And, unfortunately, on days like today, you need to kind of get behind that ball. But um, catchable ball, it's just the wind not helping him there at all as it kept drifting towards center and eventually dropped in. So with one out here in the inning, Martinsburg has a runner 
in scoring position here for Jameer Brown. Brown on the day. Walking. And the next pitch, a breaking ball called strike one. Nice breaking ball from Sweeney. Ball's got a little bend to it. Yeah, it's definitely got some good movement. Starts starting on the inside part of the plate and then kind of moves back across the plate. Makes it a tough pitch to really read. The next one hit foul by Jameer, Jameer Brown. Jameer was setting on that fastball. He was ready for it. He's seen both pitches. Let's see what Sweeney goes to here. You know, a, a go-to pitch could be a you know, curveball away. It might find a little dirt. So Eckelberger is going to have to be on his toes here. The 0-2 pitch from Sweeney, the right-hander, looked like a fastball, and it was high for a ball. I'm not sure if it was a ball or if it actually caught the bat yeah, It might have been slightly, fouled off yeah. as well. It seems like it could have been since no runners moved on the pitch that got away from the catcher. You would think the runner probably yeah, would have tried to take off there. I think it caught the handle as uh, Jameer started the bat. Yeah, We're seeing an 0-2 count. By the umpire. So, uh, yeah, ball that ran in on Jameer. Check swing foul. Rubenthal takes his lead. Sweeney checks the runner. And delivers again here on 0-2. There's the breaking ball. Hit down toward third. Coming up and making the play is Cumley. He throws the first in time for the out. Throws up the line a little bit. He tried to run Rubenthal back to the bang, but Rubenthal's still taking third. So it's a runner on third base with two down for Braden Edwards. Yeah, big curveball. Uh, Jameer stayed with it, took a big hop, came up and, and up, up in the chest area of Cumbly, who was able to make a nice play there. Looked at Rupenthal, but then turned and made a couple of steps towards first, and Rupenthal broke and easily got back. But the throw was up the line, and uh, should Jameer had you know got been able to get under that or something, might have found the way to get there. But that's just a tough. When you're running with your back to it, you really can't see where the ball is at. Going to react. Pitch to Edwards. Hit hard up the middle toward the second baseman, Wasaki. And Wasaki makes the throw in time for the final out of the inning. So we will head to the bottom of the third. It is still Martinsburg 5, Spring Mills, not, or Spring Mills 1. We're back in one minute. Spring is that perfect time for your outside oasis. RAI Properties has been in business for over 20 years. They do fences, patios, decks, and more. They'll even help you with HOA management, making it easy on you when it comes to dues, collections, violations, and those pesky monthly reports. Call them and schedule a visit today at 304-995 9764 or visit www.raiproperties.com. Score big this month with a new Toyota from CMA's Toyota of Martinsburg. We've got a great starting lineup of your favorite Toyota models on our lot. Right now, get 3.99% financing for 60 months on a new 2024 RAV4. Or check out a new 2024 Tundra and get up to $5,500 off MSRP. And every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care and our lifetime powertrain warranty. Shoot and score at CMA's Toyota of Martinsburg.com, where owners just care more. We welcome you back here to Martinsburg. Bottom of the third inning, brought to you by Century 21 Modern Realty Results. If you're looking for a home in the Tri-State, they have you covered. Starting to warm up a little bit here at Spring Mills. The sun has come out. Clouds kind of moving out of the area. Christian Alter doing the pitching for the Bulldogs still as we head to this bottom half of the third trip. So far, doing a good job. Only one hit allowed, that double by Eichelberger back in the second. And yeah. Other than that, he's been pretty much the Christian Alter that we've seen all season. Yeah, he's done a great job here so far. I mean, that ball that Eichelberger got on that fastball got over a, you know, he got a pretty good piece of that. But other than that, he's limited the walks, which is what you have to do on a day like today. And the defense that he has behind him, you know, is a, it is just a pretty pretty impressive as, you know, you see one of Mark Brooks starting outfielders on the pitcher's mound. And one of Martinsburg's starting outfielders on the bench, and they still have three quality, you know, outfielders and guys out there. So that just shows you, kind of shows you the depth that they have that next man up uh, depth this year. Masaki takes that first pitch for a call and strike. Next one misses for a ball. One ball, one strike 
here on the Spring Mills second baseman, the number nine hitter. It's the 9-1-2 due up. Alter's breaking ball is a little bit high for ball two. If you can't tell, if you're listening to the radio, the wind is still blowing, but the sun came out. Yeah. So no longer are we dealing with rain and drizzle. Alter's next pitch hit well out towards center field, but there to make the play is the center fielder, Logan Wilt. Logan Wilt out there today. Now batting for Cardinals, number five, Bryce Anders. So back to the top of the order, Anders was hit by a pitch in that first inning. He came around to score the first earned run of the season for Christian Alter. That's been a great start. This one popped up, though, by Anders over toward first. Jameer Brown makes the play in foul territory, reaches up behind his head to make that catch quickly here two down here in this third inning yeah it's not what uh spring mills was hoping for down four runs and you know Mar- helton barton's first score us that inning maybe try to get a couple guys on chip away but right now they are two quick outs jacob comely had a sacrifice bunt his first time up it was a well executed but nearly was able to bunt for a hit the pitch from alter is high and outside for ball one comely has been an ace on the mound for the Cardinals and one of their leaders this season. Yeah, he has to be leading the E-pack in strikeouts, I would think. <laughs> he seems, seems like to he put up big, digit, big strikeout numbers every time he pitches. Big swing and a miss there. So, yeah, seven, eight, nine strikeouts usually where he's at. So He held Martinsburg in check when they played earlier this year. One ball, one strike from Alter, a breaking ball. Beautiful pitch there for strike two. Looked like it was definitely going to run in and hit Cumley and then at that last second broke across the plate for a strike. Yeah, nice curveball. Up a little. You don't, you'd like to have it down, but certainly froze him. Another breaking ball this time. He misses his spot for ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Mark Burke playing Cumley straight up. The next pitch on 2-2. Two, two. Called strike three. Christian Alter getting out of the inning with another strikeout. His second of the game, and we head to the fourth inning with our score of Martinsburg 5, Spring Mills 1. This is West Virginia High School Baseball and Talk Radio, WRNR and TV 10. We're back at 60. I do. I do. We got double the Rock's gas rewards, six cents off a gallon. I can't believe you didn't fill up. That's double my rent. Oh, my car. Bye. Save now with double the gas discount, six cents off a gallon with Rock's rewards. We got double the Rock's gas rewards, six cents off a gallon. You had one job! It's twin girls. Save now with double the gas discount, six cents off a gallon with Rock's rewards. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. Sure, sure. We welcome you back here to the top of the fourth inning. Brought to you by the Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Companies. Reliable coverage since 1877. Call 304-263-0809 for a quote today or visit fmiwv.com. Thank you for trip to Evan. Happy to have you with us. Dylan Bishop, our cameraman, Colin Conklin, back in the studio as we begin this fourth inning. Here, Keegan Everhart coming to the plate, 9 1 2, due up for Martinsburg. Yeah, you got Keegan Everhart. You got Jackson Steen in for the injured uh, Isaac Grove on deck. Uh, but, um, luckily for Martinsburg, they do have some depth out there as, as Grove is uh, hopefully not out for an extended period of time, just a, a game or two, but certainly. He would looked a little gimp he, you know, when he came up a little gimp from that uh, stolen base or the first inning. Yeah. Um, still came around to score uh, there. In yeah, sure. And Everhart hits one's on the ground toward third. Everhart able to not reach first there. He grounds out. 
Nice play by Cumley. He stayed down on it. The ball stayed down. He expected to maybe just hot come up, but it, it didn't come up. He was able to stay down on it and make a nice strong throw across the diamond <coughs> to uh, retire Everhart, who got a base hit the last inning through that uh, five six hole. So I'll bring Grove to, the, or I'm sorry, Steen to the plate, and Jackson Steen takes a big swing at that one for strike one. So far, this spot has walked twice. Steen in the second and Grove in the first. Next pitch to Jackson Steen is a ball. One ball, one strike. You gotta like Steen's O O uh, approach there. He he really cut it loose there. He took a took a hack at it. He's been kind of shortened up this year when he gets you know he hits the ball really really well in the cage. You see him in the game a little bit. Sometimes he shortens his swing up, and uh, you know he needs to go ahead and have that approach that he has. Um, you know, when it's 0-0 to get, go ahead and, and cut it loose. So. Senior season for Jackson Steen. Gets ahead here, two balls and a strike. Nice pitch from Sweeney, a breaking ball, missing outside for ball three. Sweeney and Alter kind of have a similar pitching style, I feel like. You know, a lot of curve balls, a lot of off-speed stuff, try to keep it in the zone. Yeah, not real big guys on the mound. Not a tremendous amount of velo, but good location, like, like you see there on the outside part of the plate, fastball. And uh, a nice curve ball that breaks, you know, well. It'll freeze a right-hander or come back door on a on a lefty. So, uh, good job by both these these two young men. Certainly have uh, done a good job here today. Next pitch is high and outside for ball four. So, <laughs> again, the leadoff spot drawing a walk for Martinsburg. And with one out here in the inning, Carson Buber will come to the plate. He is one for two with a single and an RBI and a fly out to center. Number five. You ask any high school coach or in pretty much any coach, they, they don't really – they'll trade a high one-base percentage leadoff guy over a, a big uh, uh, batting average guy in the leadoff spot all day long. So great job of, you know, leadoff spot batting a 1,000 here today as far as one-base percentage goes. Sweeney delivers to Boomer. Boomer sends it into left center field. That one get down for – well, could have been extra bases, but a good job by Taylor to get to that one quickly and keep Boober to just a single. Runners on the corners now with one down, and Oviedo coming to the plate. Yeah, nice job by Steen. Ball's hitting the gap. Uh, Taylor made a good job cutting off, but Steen Oviedo. reading it all the way. Ball in front of him. Uh, you know, it was at his call, and he uh, he took off for third and never never broke stride. We're going to see Coach Barrett come out and – Maybe take the ball from Cumley, or excuse me, from Steen. Yep, going to bring in Schwartz. Going to bring in Taylor. Uh, calling in his right fielder and or his left fielder and his center fielder. Yeah, it looks like I have some changes here. Like number Bradley Butts. It looks like Schwartz is coming to the dugout. Maybe the changes glove. I don't, we'll see what happens here as Bradley Butts is going to center. It's like Sweeney's going back to right. I believe Schwartz is coming to the mound. Let this thing play out, right? Yeah, we'll go ahead and take a one or 30 minute break and then return with the pitching change. This is West Virginia High School Baseball and Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. The Skinner family has been representing West Virginians for more than 50 years. We've changed the name of our firm to Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers because we want to be clear about what we do. We represent people who have been in car, truck, and other catastrophic accidents. We're here to be a voice for the injured and vulnerable, and we take that job seriously with deep commitment to serving our clients wherever they are. Just Google Skinner Accident Lawyer or visit SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. count game. We welcome you back here to Spring Mills High School. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Trip Tobin. Cardinals make another pitching change. It's going to be Swartz into the game to pitch from center field. 
And then, like like you said, Trip, there it looks like Butts came in to play center. And then Sweeney moved back to right. And then I believe uh, Trump Hour moved from right to left, and Taylor came out of the game. So Butts is in Taylor's spot. Might be DH for. But again, our pitching changes brought to you by Small One and Small Insurance and Martinsburg General Insurance Solution. Call at 121 Administrative Drive. Call 304 263 3361. It'll be Schwartz to pitch and Oviedo now to the plate. Spring Mills has got a. They're going to Greenbrier East uh, tomorrow. They got a doubleheader and they got a game against. Uh, the Washington Patriots on uh, Monday, so a lot of games ahead of them. And so maybe, you know, this is a game where they were going to give everybody a couple innings, not sure. Uh, but regardless, as our third pitcher we've seen, you've seen Anders uh, stopped at 50, uh, seen Sweeney stopped at 26. So uh, see what we're going to have here with Schwartz. There's a breaking ball for a strike as Boober had taken off and taken second. So Martinsburg with two runners in scoring position here for Oviedo who finds himself behind in the count. No balls and two strikes. Excuse me. Uh, Spring Mills going to play uh, Phillip Barber uh, Saturday and uh, Hampshire on Monday. Tuesday they have Clear Spring. Wednesday Washington. So they do have a slew of games ahead of them. So it uh, looks like they're going to they're going to keep some pitching available. Um, try to keep this game a striking distance, but not try to uh, run any of their pitchers out. Yeah, it makes sense. The next pitch here from Schwartz is lined to left field by Oviedo, and that ball is gone. A three-run home run for Brayden Oviedo. Got out of here in a hurry off the bat of the third baseman, and Martinsburg extends its lead to 8-1 to one here at Spring Mills. Braden Oviedo batting in that three spot showed why. Uh, we see him uh, hit a walk-off home run the other day, and now here he is going to a similar spot. Took that fastball over the middle and sent it over the left field wall out there near the scoreboard. And, you know, when it left the bat, it certainly had a chance. I didn't know if the wind was going to affect it or not, but it took off. And Braden Oviedo's got a couple home runs here on the season. Yeah, so that one of the three runs uh, kind as well. Yeah, should be eight to one. Scoreboard showing nine to one, but good swing of the bat there from Oviedo. Christian Alter now coming to the plate, the pitcher, and he's got to feel good about pitching in this situation as uh, he'll now send this one in the right center field, and that will get down for extra bases for Alter. Alter is rounding first, headed to second. He's going to stay at second base with a single. So one out, single, with the bases empty for Christian Alter, who continues to hit very well on the four-spot trip. Yeah, I mean, you know, they got him out twice uh, early, and that's something a lot of teams haven't done. Um, you know, he's he's generally been, a, you know, a, a two for four, three for four kind of guy. Uh, again, smaller in stature, but puts up huge numbers um, and, and good uh, – Put hits the ball on the gap, takes advantage of, uh, you know, outfielders misplaying base, or uh, outfielders uh, taking bad angles, and gets good jumps on the ball or reads from the, from his spot, at, and just uh, puts up doubles and triples each game. It seems like. Ben Risenweber here hitting with one ball, one strike count, and a runner in scoring position as the Bulldogs have continued to have a big inning here, eight to one now the score, and this one misses low. Rylan Schwartz on the mound. Spring Mills has stuck with the uh, infield intact. Comley third, uh, Anders or Wasaki and uh, Montgomery around the around the horn with Taylor Butts and or excuse me, Trump Power Butts and uh, Sweeney and right. Excuse me, yeah, Trump Power Butts Sweeney as we go from left to right. Still Trump doing catching Dave three. Michaelberger. Trump Power's played three positions today, so he's had a lot to do. Right Jer field, left field, and third base. The journal's here. He wants that utility player. Well, so is J.P. Sweeney. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, well, he's played right twice. Risenweber sends this one out toward right. Sweeney chasing after, and exactly. that one's over the fence for a two-run home run. I don't know. That one.
it seemed to, when he left there, I thought it was going to be foul, and it just yeah. kept carrying and carrying down the line, and it found its way in Alpo, an Alpo taco there as he sent that one uh, over the right field wall just inside the pole for to give Martinsburg a 10-1 lead as they are starting to really open things up here with uh, extra base hits and uh, hard hit baseball. But good things happen when you uh, put the bat on the ball. And that ball was hit. Um, Oviedo's left here is sort of a more of a line drive. That that ball was hit up in the air. And when it was hit, you seen the right fielder kind of take off for the corner and, and turn his back a little bit, so we knew it was hit pretty well. But um, it carried on out of here. So home run for Ben Risenweber. I'm not sure. It might be his first of his high school career. Yeah, well hit ball there. Two RBI home run for Risenweber. Extends the Bulldogs' lead out to nine at ten to one, and the next pitch is high for a ball. It's funny because our courtesy runner, fifteen, which I don't have the roster in front of me, Miller. Miller, he had thought that I guess the ball had gotten down inside the park, so he was sprinting around second. And yeah. Coach uh, Byler was just like, "Hey, you can slow down. You can walk this one in. It's home run." So. Uh, Next pitch here to Owen Rupenthal. This breaking ball high and outside for a ball. First three batters. Schwartz, no, excuse me. First three batters that Schwartz face was home run, double home run. Tough outing. Yeah. Uh, tough spot to come into the lineup out off the bench. Or excuse me, out of center field. Tough spot to come in to face those three guys. Uh, you know, so just a tough spot for Riley Schwartz. To come in, deal with that part of the Marsburg lineup. Rupert Thal draws a walk, and Jameer Brown coming to the plate as the wind is picked back up here at Spring Mills High School. Jameer Brown, the first baseman so far on the day, has walked and grounded out, throw over, not in time. Brown looking to do some damage here in his sophomore season. Next pitch as runner takes off. Brown pops it up behind second. And making the catch there was Wyasaki for Attention the all Spring Mill students riding a bus. Uh, second must, out. Muster and head down to the school at this time. All Spring Mills High School students <laughs> are driving, taking the bus. Must muster uh, we'll head down to the school at this time. Bring Brayton Thank Edwards to the plate. Today. Edwards has walked and grounded out so far in the game. And look on the plate here of a runner on first for the Bulldogs. Now batting number 20, Brayden Edwards. And Edwards. Pitch from Swartz is called strike there at the night. Edwards, catcher. Edwards also with big time power. You know, I think he leads this club in home runs. Well, maybe him and Oviedo are tied now, possibly. As runner takes off, throw to second. Looked like he got him, but the tag was not there. The ball came out of the glove. So good throw there from Eichelberger, but could not get Rupenthal. And he's in there at second base with the stolen mm -hmm. base. Nice throw by Eichelberger right on the bag that time. And uh, just as. Rupenthal was sliding in and just dislodged that ball out of Andrew's glove. Boober would be up there as well with the home runs. I believe he's got at least two. Yeah, Boober, yeah, you're correct. Yeah. Marsburg's starting to show some of that power up and down the lineup as the season progresses. I didn't think today was a big, you know, day the ball was going to carry, so these balls that were hit here today were, I mean, they were kind of muscled out. Edwards, a big swing there. He was looking to... Extend that lead out to 12-1 with that swing, but couldn't quite get all of it or get a piece of it. So two balls and two strikes here on the catcher with the runner, Rupenthal, taking his lead off second base. And now with two strikes, we'll see if he just tries to come through with a base knock here. As the pitch from Swartz, a swing and a miss. Strike three, that will end the inning. But it, not before the Bulldogs hit two homers. Oviedo. And Risenweber going deep. Martinsburg, Martinsburg 10. 10. Spring Mills, Spring Mills one. 1 here in the fourth. We'll head to the bottom half of the inning when we come back. This is West Virginia High School Baseball Talk Radio, WRNR and TV 10. <laughs> 
Honda Ridgeline, Passport, and Pilot are in a league of their own when it comes to rugged capability. Their relentless power and versatility make these vehicles the ultimate challengers for exhilarating adventures and formidable terrain. But it's not just performance that makes these cars special. It's the unwavering determination that inspires everything we do. That's why we're KBB.com's best value brand of 2023. CMA's Honda of Winchester, 3985 Valley Pike. CMA's moving lives forward. Available all-wheel drive on Pilot based on 2023 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book. Visit KBB.com for more information. Finally, West Virginia is moving in the right direction. As your West Virginia Senate President, Craig Blair has passed the most conservative legislative agenda in the nation. He has fought for our values like banning elective abortions, protecting our Second Amendment rights, and prevented boys from playing in girls' sports. Senator Craig Blair championed the largest tax cut in the history of our state. Craig Blair, a strong conservative leader, promises made, promises kept. This election, vote for Republican Craig Blair for State Senate. Pay for by the committee to re-elect Craig Blair. Bottom of the fourth inning is brought to you by Mother Shucker's Crab Shack, located at 1014 Winchester Avenue in Martinsburg. If you don't like it, shuck it up, Buttercup, here as our score. Martinsburg 10, Spring Mills 1 here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Mick Verzellini alongside me, Trip Tobin, back in the studio, Colin Glockland, Dylan Bishop, our cameraman, Trip, as we uh, head to the bottom of the fourth, Martinsburg. Spring is that perfect time for your outside oasis. RAI Properties has been in business for over 20 years. They do fences, patios, decks, and more. They'll even help you with HOA management, making it easy on you when it comes to dues, collections, violations, and those pesky monthly reports. Call them and schedule a visit today at 304-995-9764 or visit www.raiproperties.com. Not sure where to go or who to trust with your flooring project? And start with Trips Flooring, proudly serving the area for more than 25 years. Specializing in floor sanding and refinishing, along with installation of new flooring, including hardwood, tile, vinyl, laminate, carpet, and the hottest trend in flooring luxury vinyl, tile, and luxury vinyl plank. Are you on a budget? Check out their warehouse, cash and carry, or call 304-229-7009, or visit them online at tripsfloorsanding.com. Attention, West Virginians. Patrick Morrissey is the one proven conservative running for governor. With an unmatched record of delivering victories for our state, conservative Republican Patrick Morrissey has been endorsed by the NRA, stood up against federal overreach, fought and sued Joe Biden to protect West Virginia jobs, and defended our values against the far-left agenda. When Biden screws West Virginia, I sue Biden. And West Virginia wins a lot. I'm Attorney General Patrick Morrissey. I fought against the deep state and won to protect our jobs, defended our Second Amendment rights, upheld the sanctity of life, protected our kids from the woke left and their radical agenda. I'm the only proven conservative running and was the first to endorse Trump in this race. Paid for by Morrissey 2024. Patrick Morrissey is the one proven conservative running for... Spring is that perfect time for your outside oasis. RAI Properties has been in business for over 20 years. They do fences, patios, decks, and more. They'll even help you with HOA management, making it easy on you when it comes to dues, collections, violations, and those pesky monthly reports. Call them and schedule a visit today at 304-995-9764 or visit www. RAIproperties.com. Score big this month with a new Toyota from CMA's Toyota of Martinsburg. We've got a great starting lineup of your favorite Toyota models on our lot. Right now, get 3.99% financing for 60 months on a new 2024 RAV4. Or check out a new 2024 Tundra and get up to $5,500 off MSRP. And every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care and our lifetime powertrain warranty. Shoot and score at CMA's Toyota of Martinsburg.com, where owners just care more. 
my kids. You know I want the best for you, don't you? We need to have a conversation. End-of-life planning is no one's favorite discussion, but the relief of having everything in place when the hour of need arrives is a gift. Give it to your family. Plan ahead with us. Brown Funeral Homes, a leading provider of cremations, invites you to explore the many flexible options of cremation. From environmental considerations to the benefit of greatly reduced cost, it may be the perfect answer for your family. Online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. Republican Wayne Clark, your delegate for West Virginia's 99th District. Income tax cuts for all West Virginians? Wayne delivered. School choice for kids and families? Wayne delivered. Protecting our kids from online predators? Wayne delivered. Republican Wayne Clark has worked to pass some of the most conservative policies in our state, protecting the rights of the unborn and our Second Amendment rights, bringing good-paying jobs for West Virginians. Vote to re-elect Wayne Clark in the Republican primary on May 14th. Paid for by Wayne Clark for West Virginia. Come back here soon. Got a courtesy runner in for Schwartz, but I can't see his number. We welcome you back here to Spring Mills. 10-1 to 1, Marnsburg. Again, we apologize for the technical difficulties. Weather probably playing a factor in that and some sort. So we again apologize for that. Um, but I believe Right now we have, well, we have two outs get, or one out. Yeah, one out. Sweeney took strike three looking to start the inning off from Alter, and then we had a, a ground ball uh, that was hit. Oviedo had to rush his throw there. It wasn't hit real hard. He came up third, and, and the ball was up a little bit. Jameer made the jump, tried to make the tag, and the ball dislodged. So Ryan Schwartz uh, was able to reach on the air. Uh, we'll give him an error in the book there. Now he has a, a courtesy runner for the pitcher out there, which I haven't gotten his number yet. Uh, as we now see, uh, uh, excuse me, Trump higher at the plate. The 1 1 count. The 1 1 pitch is fouled away. Trump Hour flew out his first time to right field. And Spring Mills trailing by nine. Like you said earlier, Trip Martinsburg certainly wanted to get out of this inning have an opportunity to possibly just play for one. And then, of course, unbelievable pitch there from Alter to get the strikeout yeah, on the curveball. Big-time curveball started up, and a uh, little bit of gravity there pushed it down across the zone, according to uh, umpire James Franklin, as a Trump umpire didn't agree. But his, what his call doesn't matter as we see some... Let's see number four, Eichelberger coming to the plate with two outs. Yeah, it was tough to kind of tell from our angle exactly where that pitch was, but it did look high initially, but with it being that breaking ball, yeah. we've seen Alter kind of sneak that across the plate multiple times today, so not surprised if it would have came across in the zone. It's the next pitch from Alter. There's that curveball again, this time low, though, for a ball. Eichelberger with the... The only hit so far, I believe, for Spring Mills, that double. Yeah, he got that double. He got a hold of that fastball, set on it early in the game, and uh, sent it flying into right field, or excuse me, left field, over Steen's head, and was able to come up with that double. So catcher here with an opportunity to have a two-hit for uh, two hit day. Here Still two outs and a runner on first for Spring Mills. Next pitch from Alter misses outside and low for a ball. Wind really picking up here at Spring Mills High School. Bulldogs beat the Cardinals in their first game, 4-2. It's a close one. This one was close early. It was 1-1 after the first inning, but since then, Martinsburg really pulling away. Here's a walk. So Eichelberger will stay one for one. Looks like Curry is the uh, is the pinch, or excuse me, courtesy runner who's at second. We're going to see another courtesy runner for the catcher, number two, I believe. And that would be uh, Sam Mullendor. So we have Curry and Mullendor on as the pitcher catcher have reached this inning. As we got timeouts, Coach Kurt Zarnick is coming out to talk to uh, Christian Alter. Got a nine run lead, just telling him to pound the strike zone probably, make sure everything. You know, in this cold weather, make sure he's not tightened up after that long inning. And uh, so right now he's talking to Edwards. 
uh, is alter, I guess, about some pitch calling. And so they're all on the same page now. And then on first and second, Landon Stanley. Landon Stanley comes to the play with a chance to uh, try to give Spring Mills a, an opportunity to score a run here with the man on second base. Yep, Stanley at the plate, two on for the Cardinals, and the pitch from Christian Alter swaying in a foul tip for strike one. Alter so far, like I said, only giving up that one hit. Did give up a first inning run. Stanley got the mid mid uh, drifts on here with the old school stirrups. Next pitch, that breaking ball, and nearly came back again for a strike, but it did miss. From our angle, he starts it at the helmet. Yeah. <laughs> we're kind of down a little bit. We're kind of we're, we're field level, but it looks like it's going to hit the batter in the head and then drops in. Next pitch. This low and outside for a ball. Nice job. Nice block there by Braden Edwards. Keeps the force everywhere. Keeps Martin, uh, keeps uh, base runners at first and second. Uh, keeps at least one man out of scoring position as they did, did, weren't able to move up. Next pitch from Alter. Another low ball for ball three here from Christian. So with two outs in the inning, a little bit of struggles from Alter. The wind has, again, been picked up quite a bit, so yeah. that's affected them. Yeah, the wind's really uh, changed here. Uh, worse, it's blown today, I believe. Yeah, it feels like it. Blue Alter's hat off his head. Alter checks the runner and then delivers the next pitch to Stanley. He fouls oh. that one. That one hits off the umpire Franklin as well. Yeah, he got Franklin up in the shoulder. We're going to have a 3-2 two out pitch here but we're going to have a little break as as uh Braden Edwards is going to walk it out to the pitcher and uh umpire James Frank is going to walk it off a little bit here certainly took one pretty pretty square there on the top of the shoulder not sure how high those pads are on he has come up but it was uh, straight from the bat to his shoulder and we can right. we could see it a direct hit from here he yeah, appears to be all right Stanley now with two strikes on him, a full count. Runner on second, runner on first for Spring Mills. The Cardinals down 10-1 to 1 here in this bottom half of the fourth inning. Big pitch here, 3-2, two, two outs. Alters 3-2, curveball hit on the ground towards short. Boober plays it well, throws the first in time for the final out of the inning. So the Cardinals threatened, but the Bulldogs hold off the runners from coming around to score, and we head so it's on the fifth. Martinsburg searching for that one run to possibly put it at a run rule. This is West Virginia High School Baseball and Talk Radio WR and R TV Ten. Life is evolving. Over the past decade, the way we do almost everything has changed. Get on your phone, see something you like, click on it, and it shows up at your door. Why should the way you have your car serviced be any different? Why waste your time going to a dealership service department when Hager Sound Ford and Hancock Chevrolet will come to you? They service all makes, all models, and offer full parts and labor warranties. Hagerstown Ford and Hancock Chevrolet will come to your door or office and service your vehicle while you're doing what you need to be doing, conducting that business meeting or mowing the lawn. Why take time out of your busy schedule when you don't have to? Hagerstown Ford and Hancock Chevrolet's friendly, knowledgeable staff will come to you where you live or where you work for full service maintenance. From oil changes to tire rotations, brakes, batteries, multi-point inspections, they handle it all. Hagerstown Ford and Hancock Chevrolet is committed to delivering the best of the best to their customers. Trust them to service your vehicle where you're at, at home or at work. Skip the time-consuming and terminal wait at the dealership. Schedule your appointment at FordofHagerstown.com or HancockChevy.com. Back here to Spring Mills High School. Martinsburg leading 10 to 1 over Spring Mills. Our top of the fifth inning is brought to you by L.A. Roberts Jewelers, committed to excellence in quality design and craftsmanship. Located at 146 North Queen Street in Martinsburg. New pitcher on for Spring Mills. It's, I believe, Butts coming. Bradley in. Butts, yeah, it looks like. Oh. One, a lefty. Like, one. Uh, Butts. Schwartz went back to center. Right. Sweeney's still in left or in right. So we're not sure exactly. Butts was in center. Right. I believe everything else looks the same from what I'm seeing. Game changer has Trump higher in left. Schwartz in right. Sweeney or Schwartz in center. Sweeney in right. Around the horn you have Comley, Anders, Wasaki, 
And Montgomery with the Michael Berger behind the plate and on the mound now, Bradley Butts. It's a swap from Swartz to Butts and Butts the lefty. Delivers the first pitch strike here to Keegan. Everhart, Everhart so far, a single, an RBI single back in the second inning. And ground out for him as well as he'll take this one low and inside for ball one. One ball and a strike. 9-1-2 due up. Again, Isaac Grove having to leave the game due to an injury. So Jackson Steen in that one hole now. And the next pitch from the left-hander, Butts. Misses outside for ball two. Two balls and a strike. Walter's gotten through four innings with uh, only two hits, one run, uh, none earned, two, uh, four strikeouts so uh, in one walk. Uh, so he's doing what Christian Alter does. This one hit on the ground. It's through the legs of Cumley. Everhart will round first and stay there as Cumley went down to get it but came up without the ball and it went through his legs. Yeah, he ranged to his ranged to his right a little bit, and the ball's, you know, ended up kind of kicking back, I guess. And it, uh, like he's showing this at the shortstop there, kicked back, and it went to his glove side, and it just got right through his legs there at the end. So Everhart will reach first, and Martin bring Steen to the plate. See if Steen's going to bunt. Markberg play for a run here with a lefty on them. I will miss outside for a ball. <coughs> so far, they've been. Perfect on their uh, steal attempts as well, so could see Everhard try to steal second, but could um, you know the lefty is going to lefty on the mound is going to shut that down a little right. bit. We'll see how they play it as Steen takes that one for a strike. Or they may also be looking at it as with Grove possibly missing some time. You're going to need Steen to. Yeah. Get some good at bats for you, possibly. And Let him swing away, get some cuts. Yeah. Everhart does take off, the f- throw not coming. So Keegan is at in scoring position now, and no sacrifice or was needed. So. Coach Baller and the Martinsburg coaching staff would like to see Steen, you know, uh, take off here and take over that spot. and. At least temporarily, if not depending on the extent of the injury to Grove, but certainly some depth there. Steen started off the year starting in left field, so it's not, uh, you know, it's not like they're just uh, pulling a guy from the JV or something. These guys certainly have varsity capabilities. Yeah, I think too it gives you the option as this one misses outside for ball four. But if you know you get an if this time with Grove out ends up being significant, and then. As the leadoff guys walked four times so far today, but, yeah. Uh, Carson, if it ends up being significant, and you have days like today where Alter's pitching, and you have either Wilt or Steen out there in the field, you know, it gives you an option of not DHing for that guy if maybe one of these guys come on. So. All right. Uh, here's a strike, and that Boop. gives you another bat on the bench if you want to pinch it later in the game or something like that. Booper with a big chance here to. Uh... Get a couple more RBIs under his belt. He's got a couple singles today already. Uh, an RBI single early and a single later in the game. Big swing there for a strike from Carson Boober. You like that high fastball. <clears throat> Just missed it. You see some uh, garbage out there or bag out there. and uh, Started off in the left field. Now it's all the way to the right field. <laughs> Boober sends this one down the line. Just foul. Shows you what the wind's doing at ground level out there as that baggie has taken off. Yeah, I thought I was going to lose stuff like a lot <laughs> before you got here, Trip. So things kind of calmed down when the wind started to slow down a little bit there in the middle innings, but it's picked back up uh, as Boober fouls this one off. Uh, it's like it got Eichelberger on the hand. Maybe the wrist. Yeah, he definitely got a stinger there as uh, Uber fouled that off into Eichelberger's finger. Coach Barrett's going to take a look. Um, yeah, Eichelberger's on. not really wanting to talk <laughs> about it. but he didn't want to talk about it, it seemed like. But, yeah, he, he appears to be all right. Coach Barrett takes a quick look. And, uh, it's good to see. Obviously, you want to make sure the kid's okay. And Might lose a nail. <laughs> like he caught him on the hand pretty good. Runners on first and second for the Bulldogs. Booper sends this one on the ground toward third. Cumley bobbles it and 
comes up unable to make a throw, and Carson Buber reaches on the air. Yeah, once again, the ball just uh, bouncing around, got up in Cumley's gut there, and he wasn't able to do much with it. Uh, playable a ball, it wasn't hit very hard, it just uh, brought him in, and then he wasn't able to do anything with it as it bounced around there in his glove. So Brain Noviena looking to add a possibly player of the game status today with a three-run home run and a single so far. Yeah, young man seen it as good as anybody in this. And he already has four RBIs, so... See what he can do here. See what he does after that big home run. See if he just stayed within himself or if he, uh, you know, gets fired up a little bit. Gets too a much. little, <laughs> gets a little aggressive up there. But right now he's just he's being patient. You know, looking for his pitch. One ball, one strike here on Oviedo. The base is loaded for the Bulldogs who lead it ten to one here, top of the fifth inning. Butts looks into his catcher Eichelberger and. The lefty delivers the next pitch, and it's a big swing and a miss from Oviedo for strike two. Pitch low in the zone there, probably in the dirt even. But yeah, nice pitch there as it kind of bit. I'm not sure what was on it, but it had a little run to it. Maybe the wind aided it. <laughs> as time called by James Franklin, the home plate on fire. Sun coming back out here at Spring Mills. Oviedo will dig back in with the bases loaded. Nobody out. Next pitch from Butts. Breaking ball high and inside for ball two. Ball's, ball's up, uh, but I wasn't sure when it left the, the Butts' hand if it wasn't going to be struck at the way it kind of hung up there. And we need to <laughs> time again with this wind to pick him up. We'll dig back in here on two balls, two strikes. Oviedo's got that eye black running down there. Everhart on third as this one misses outside. Count now full at three and two. Everhart on third. Grove, or I'm sorry, Steen on second. And Boober over there on first. Two errors here in the inning have allowed Martinsburg to get two of those three runners. And uh, Steen reaching on the walk. And the next pitch from Butts on three two is high for ball four. And he'll walk in the run. And that makes it 11 to one. Martinsburg, nobody out. It's a good at bat for Oviedo, considering, you know, he, a lot of guys get up there feeling it. They'll swing at bad pitches, get now themselves in bad counts, and there he just kind of hung out, you know, took what the pitcher gave him, and uh, have our, Marsburg has their fourth free base of the game, of oh, the inning, excuse me, as they have three walks, and, or two errors and two walks, correct, this inning so far. Yep. So no hits so far, just... All three bases as Christian Alter coming to the plate with the score now 11 to 1. And the first pitch to him is a ball. Wind blew so hard, it blew the book away. <laughs> Turned me down, didn't it? Yeah, tried to. Alter takes that one. Turn. Is that no, me? that's not you. That's that money. Okay, now I can't hear myself. You do seem a little bit quieter, though, all of a Good. sudden. But every time the wind blows, I think it moves our dial. <laughs> Could be. Allen misses inside for another ball on Alter with the bases loaded. Oviedo on first, Steen on third, and standing there on second is Carson Boober. Next pitch to Christian Alter, check swing, call to strike. Christian didn't want to walk there anyway. 3-1 pitch to Alter is high and inside for ball four. So another walked-in run. Then Martinsburg extends the lead to 12-1. That will bring Ben Reisenweber to the plate who homered his last time up, a two-run home run. Reisenweber also has struck out and grounded out so far. Miller will come on and courtesy run for Alter with the bases loaded. For Ryzen Weber. And Coach Barrett coming out, possibly making another pitching change or maybe just talking to his guys. It looks like a pitching change. Here comes Montgomery, I believe. Well, we'll take a break. We'll give you the pitching change when we come back. One-minute break. This is West Virginia High School Baseball Talk Radio WRNR TV 10. 
When you are looking for the perfect gift, look no further than L.A. Roberts Jewelers at 146 North Queen Street in downtown Martinsburg. Choose from a huge selection of unique items from the finest diamonds that make your eyes sparkle to exquisite timepieces, figurines, and collectibles. Buying from L.A. Roberts Jewelers means that you've made the decision to do business with people who've excelled in the industry for more than 100 years. They'll be here tomorrow when you need them, and if you need your jewelry or your watch repaired, they'll do that too. L.A. Roberts in downtown Martinsburg. Old World Jewelers for a new age. The Skinner family has been representing West Virginians for more than 50 years. We've changed the name of our firm to Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers because we want to be clear about what we do. We represent people who have been in car, truck, and other catastrophic accidents. We're here to be a voice for the injured and vulnerable, and we take that job seriously with deep commitment to serving our clients wherever they are. Just Google Skinner Accident Lawyer or visit SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. We welcome you back here to Spring Mills. 12-1 Bulldogs on top. Pitching changes are brought to you by Small One and Small Insurance in Martinsburg, your total insurance solution at 121 Administrative Drive. Call 304-263-4343. As our new pitcher is Jonah Jacoby, the right-hander with the bases loaded for Martinsburg. Still nobody out in the inning. And Ben Reisenweber at the plate, who had a two-run home run his last time up. Will either extend the Bulldog lead. This one misses high for ball one. I bet he'd like to stay behind the baseball here and get another one up in that right field jet stream for a, a base clearing home run. Yeah, that would be grand slam. Quite the day. The next pitch here from right or two Reisenweber is low for a ball. Spring Mills just not able to not uh, just not able to find the strike zone much here today. It's been mostly their undoing. Of course, Martinsburg has had some big hits, but uh, the, the base runners that were on during those hits were kind of free bases, either through the the air and or the via the walk. Rosen Weber goes 3-0 here. Hey, anytime you give up free bases, it really hurts. And this inning especially, it's been tough as there's a breaking ball called for a strike. Overall, this Cardinals team has been competitive throughout the season. Most of their games have been low-scoring affairs, but a few games here and there have gotten away from them. And today's one of those days as Ryzen Weber sends a ground ball toward second to throw home. Not in time. That gets away from the catcher. Eichelberger, another run coming in to score as two come across, and that makes it 14-1. to one. So trying to get the play at home. You know, nobody out. Doesn't work out for Spring Mills. Yeah, ground ball to Wysocki. He came up, uh, brought him in, brought him into the front front of the grass. He threw home. He had time and just uh, ran up the first base side, unable. Uh, Eichelberger trying to hold that uh, pl- foot on the plate and should have just uh, give up ground and went in, grabbed the baseball, ended up getting away, and then good heads up base running by Oviedo, and he just kept coming. So. Barnesburg starting to really walk away with this now. Six, as we see, Will. Logan Will going to hit for himself this time as he's, uh, Barnesburg has uh, killed the DH here, you call it. So the old Rubenthal's day is done as the DH. Logan Wilt will come to the plate with runners on the corners for the Bulldogs. Jacoby. Resets, delivers the next pitch, and it's fouled straight back. Kind of a funky delivery from Jimmy. Jay, he's got a little bit of a herky-jerky uh, three-quarter lefty, or excuse me, righty, going off the mound there. He's in the stretch there. A uh, little bigger in stature, or thicker, and uh, comes from the side there a little bit. This one hit on the ground for second. Throw to first, in time another run. Coming in at score there, Miller, the courtesy runner, comes across, running for Alter. That's all Will has to do in that situation to get that easy RBI is get the ball on the ground that side of the field, lefty. So, you know, he did a nice job there. As Barnesburg now four. has a, a very commanding lead. Yeah, we'll bring Henderson to the plate here at 15-1. Bulldogs here in the fifth. Henderson hitting for Jameer Brown. We'll see if he stays in the game or what the Martinsburg likes to do in the next half innings. Henderson uh, went down, watched the Jefferson 
JV game prior to uh, the varsity game. Henderson pitched a, a complete game down there. I think he had nine or ten strikeouts, a shutout against Jefferson's JV. Watched him all summer last year, know what he's capable of. Um, and he's just on the cusp of this varsity team. 2 0 count here on Henderson, a runner on second base for the Bulldogs, who lead it by 14 and 15 1. The next pitch here, a called strike. Just one out in the inning. Edwards on deck, but we're going to see someone else uh, come out. And uh, as I can see, uh, another hitter coming to the plate. Next pitch, high for a ball. Uh, on this Friday afternoon at Spring Mills, Martinsburg pulling away in this one. This one hit toward right field. That will get down for a base hit. Rising over will round third but not come in to score. And the Bulldogs have runners on the corners here with just one out. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I think that could be Henderson's first of many base hits at the varsity level as he's been uh, pretty much pitching a lot. Uh, hasn't been playing the field too much. Um, been th pitching, of course, he's a staple on the JV team, but again, just uh, he, he comes to the plate and, and uh, gets himself a base hit here. As we see, Lane DeLauder on the come to the plate as he's going to swing for Keegan Everhart, or excuse me, for Braden Edwards. I doubt if he catches, though. No, probably not. <coughs> I want to say that Henderson had one earlier in the year in one of their early season blowout yeah. wins that they had, but hasn't had too many opportunities, but it does seem like when he comes into the game, he makes the most of those opportunities. Yeah, he, like I say, he, he's going to be the future, you know, a future infielder, a future, uh, you know, uh, part of this uh, uh, pitching lineup here, rotation, and it's just showing a little more of that depth that they have in that dugout. So actually, I believe you're right. That was Henderson's first hit. He has gotten some at-bats, but first hit DeLauder. at the varsity level. DeLauder's got a 2-1 count. The 2-1 pitch to Lane to Water. Hit hard, but foul. He doesn't get too many opportunities to swing the bat, except for usually late in these games he's gotten some. But, but I'm, I'm never wrong. I thought I was once, but I wasn't. Is that the old saying? I thought I was wrong once, but I wasn't. Sure. You would know because you're never wrong. <laughs> there goes the runner. Anderson sure. takes off. But nice curve. The ball water there. takes strike three. And that now should bring, well, no, it won't be ever hard now. It'll be uh, Parker Robinson. Yeah. Now Parker Robinson come in the other day. Throw the ball pretty well, showing more of that uh, pitching depth they had as they got uh, Parker got in there, and he's had a really good uh, couple innings. Yeah, doesn't get too many opportunities because, one, the Bulldog starters just seem to go complete games every time or most unless of the keep, time. Unless they keep having these shortened games. Yeah, so they don't really have to use too much of that bullpen, but he probably would have a little bit of a bigger role if – their starting pitching hasn't been as good. Yeah, he's uh, certainly well, when he comes in the game. We see what he can do. Uh, strikeout numbers are good. You know, his ERA is good. And uh, see what he can do with the bat here. Runners on second and third. Next pitch. Called strike there. Maybe get himself a couple RBIs here. Yeah. Can't remember what game it was last year, but he did have one of those run rule walk-offs on a Saturday for the Bulldogs. Last season, as this one misses outside for a ball. This is not the same situation, but still, I hope you can come through here if you're Robinson. Tough day for Spring Mills. Just couldn't seem to find the strike zone so far. And Next pitch is low for ball four, so that will load the bases. I'm sure the day started off for him really early, getting the field ready, and hats off to these guys out here, I'm sure. I know I spoke with Doug Allen, and he was out here working uh, early this morning. Now number 15, I'm sure there was Brandon other volunteers uh, that, that they don't, 
you know, unmentioned, but it took a lot to get this field ready. Only to come out and uh, give up, a, you know, 15 runs here so far and to a, a good Marsburg team after playing them really tight. Miller sends this one towards short, and that one's off the glove. That will allow two runs to come across and score, and Martinsburg continues its rally here now, 17-1. to Hey, you mentioned it, Tripp. You know, coaches coming out here. They line the field. You know, they work hard to get the field ready. And then here at Spring Mills, they don't just, you know, line the field and everything. They set up the, the sound system and all that stuff. So, you know, they got to put in quite a bit of work. Yeah. Uh, to get the game ready. And unfortunately for the Cardinals, it just, you know, didn't go their way. Obviously, they wanted to have a good performance, too, with it being uh, the scholarship day and Montgomery getting that scholarship before the game. And when you look at, you know, what Spring Mills has done, they don't have they have three wins uh, in the column. But, I mean, a, a one-run loss to Hedgesville, you know, a uh, one-run loss to Conway High School, one-run loss to to uh, Jefferson as R.J. Brown comes to the plate. Three, uh, a three nothing loss to Musselman. Uh, you know, two run loss to Clark County. One run loss to, to Washington. A two run loss to Martinsburg. So, I mean, unbelievable. This is an outlier, really. Yeah, I mean, just this happen today is certainly not something that happens all the time. This one will fly ball out the right field for the final out of the inning as Brown flies out. We head to the bottom of the fifth. 17-1 Bulldogs. This is West Virginia High School Baseball and Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. At Carter Myers Automotive, what we do today will tomorrow become what we've done. That's why owners just do more no longer defines us. Our work is never done because what we live by doesn't have a finish line. We care. Our company of owners is moving lives forward every day by finding more ways to care before, during, and after your purchase. Because when you're happy, so are we. Carter Myers Automotive. Proud to be the owners who just care more. After a car accident, what do you get when you call Mansion Ferretti? You get more experience from a local law firm with over 115 years of combined service. More respect from a team who treats clients like their own family. And more fight because we want you to get every dollar you deserve. Experience, respect, results. If you've been injured, that's what you want in your lawyer. And that's what you'll get when you call us. Car accident? Get more with Mansion Ferretti. 304-264-8505. We welcome you back here to Spring Mills, Martinsburg Cruising, 17-1 here, bottom of the fifth. Cardinals coming to the plate. Christian Alter remains out there on the mound here, Trip, And like you said, Spring Mills has played a lot of close games. Even their non-conference games that they've lost haven't been too bad. This is the, the biggest deficit they've had this season, even though their record wasn't necessarily what you would think at 3-10. and ten. So they've shown some fight, but today just didn't go their way. It could also be showing how Martinsburg's improved since the beginning of the season until now as well. Yeah, I mean, Spring Mills is greatly, you know, has, has certainly played some really tight games this year. Surprised to see, you know, this game turn out actually the way it is. But um, unfortunately, you know, Martinsburg playing better than they did when the first met Spring Mills, of course, of course, Cumley threw a whale of a baseball game. Nothing to take nothing away from him, but, um, you know, Martinsburg's a little different team offensively, the way they're hitting the baseball and moving runners. But um, regardless, uh, this is not your every day, what we see, what we've seen out of Spring Mills this year so far. So, you know, fortunately, it's been a rough day and uh, a lot of free bases, a couple errors here and there, a little communication issues early. And Next thing you know, Martinsburg, you know, if you give them an inch, they'll take a mile, and they just jumped on it, and and it's just gotten out of hand since then. Yeah, we'll see what the Cardinals do here in kind of the second half of the season as this one fouls it to the glove for a strike. Number 23 is hitting, correct? Yes. Aiden Bates, we got that? Yeah, yeah. pitch hitting here for, I believe, Montgomery. That's where we were in the lineup. Strikes out there. Another one for Christian Alter. And that'll bring Zimmerman to the plate, hitting for Wisconsin. Saki. For bottom of the fifth. Brought 
to you by the Wagner Law Firm, West Virginia's premier DUI defense term or defense attorney. Visit WestVirginiaDUILawyers.com. Next pitch here from Christian Alter runs inside for a called strike on the inside part of the plate on Zimmerman. Next pitch from Alter is popped foul and out of play. So two strikes here on Zimmerman. Alter looks into his catcher and delivers the next pitch. Called strike three on the outside corner. So it's back-to-back strikeouts to begin the fifth. That'll bring Anders back to the plate in the top of the order with two down. And Spring Mills trailing 17-1. Number five, Bryce Anders. Next pitch from Alter is popped foul and out of play. Alter's 0-1, hit on the ground toward Christian, and throw to first in time for the final out of the ball game. Martinsburg gets the win, 17-1 over Spring Mills. The Cardinals are now 3 and 11 on the year and Martinsburg improves the 17 to 1 or 17 and 1. So the score represents and Martinsburg's record as the Bulldogs game. get the win trip. The final score. Yep. They improved 17 to 1 17. with a 17 to 1 victory. Mills uh, Spring Mills giving up Ladies way too many free bases today to a, to a Mills very uh, a good Martinsburg baseball team that doesn't like to leave a lot of base runners on and uh, Martinsburg speed showed up early as it put pressure on the pitching staff and the catcher. Uh, they had a great eye at the plate, and then when they were able, you know, when, when they are given the opportunity to hit, they hit the ball deep a couple of times, uh, hit the ball hard in the gap a couple of times, and just, uh, you know, they're just a, a tough team to beat, and you almost have to play a perfect game to beat them, especially when you're young like Spring Mills, and when you give them opportunities, uh, you know, more than one out, more than three outs in an inning, they're going to they're gonna bite you, and and the dogs bit today pretty hard. But, again, very not not – conducive of what we've seen uh, out of Spring Mills this year, you know. Um, you know, they played some real, like I said, I mean, they played the E-Pack extremely tough this year with two and three and one run losses, and, and I don't think we've heard the uh, the end of them, and it, and it looks like this is very possibly going to be the 4-1 matchup in the uh, sectional, so this could be a first-round uh, matchup, Cumbly versus, you know, one of Martinsburg's top pitchers, and I think you're going to see some, you're going to see a, a, a game here in a couple of weeks, in a month or so, that's going to, that's going to uh, not be anywhere near this this type of a blowout. Yeah, we'll go ahead and take a two minute break, then roll into the Palace Lounge post game show. <coughs> Swiss Virginia High School Baseball Talk Radio WRNR and TV Ten. Score huge savings on a new Chevy this month at CMA's Chevrolet of Martinsburg. Right now, during Chevy truck season, get a new 2024 Silverado 1500 with 0.9% financing plus no payments for 120 days. Or get MVP savings with up to $11,000 off MSRP. And did we mention every new car comes with Chevy Complete Care and our lifetime powertrain warranty? Find new roads at CMA's at ChevroletofMartinsburg.com, where owners just care more. Not sure where to go or who to trust with your flooring project? And start with Trips Flooring, proudly serving the area for more than 25 years. Specializing in floor sanding and refinishing, along with installation of new flooring, including hardwood, tile, vinyl, laminate, carpet, and the hottest trend in flooring luxury vinyl, tile, and luxury vinyl plank. Are you on a budget? Check out their warehouse, cash and carry, or call 304-229-7009, or visit them online at tripsfloorsanding.com. Attention, West Virginians. Patrick Morrissey is the one proven conservative running for governor. With an unmatched record of delivering victories for our state, conservative Republican Patrick Morrissey has been endorsed by the NRA, stood up against federal overreach, fought and sued Joe Biden to protect West Virginia jobs, and defended our values against the far-left agenda. When Biden screws West Virginia, I sue Biden and West Virginia wins. 
a lot. I'm Attorney General Patrick Morrissey. I fought against the deep state and won to protect our jobs, defended our Second Amendment rights, upheld the sanctity of life, protected our kids from the woke left and their radical agenda. I'm the only proven conservative running and was the first to endorse Trump in this race. Paid for by Morrissey 2024. Patrick Morrissey is the one proven conservative running for governor. Welcome you in here to the post-game show at Spring Mills High School as Martinsburg gets the win 17-1 over the Spring Mills Cardinals. Nick Verzellini alongside me is Trip Tobin. Trip, a uh, good win here for the Bulldogs as we await Coach Aaron Byler and our player of the game, Braden Oviedo, as Coach Byler will actually join us here first. Once he puts the headset on, well, they said uh, they said Ovi was more important than me, so Cause pulled him first. Wow. So Ovi got yeah, well, you know, Oviedo's got back-to-back three-run home run games, but uh, so I don't know if you noticed the score, seventeen to one. That kind of the record you have right now. Do you recognize that? I didn't, I didn't pay any attention to that. I was just happy with how we played in this. You know, it's a it's a little bit different environment with the school kids here, and, and I think Spring Mills was was ready to go for a while. And it's cold, it's windy, and fields a little muddy, and so we had, had some things we had to deal with. So just proud of them for how they got through that. Yeah, the, you've seen the early on they had a one-one ball game. You know, Spring Mills had their had their class uh, mates here cheering them on, and you guys were able to be patient at the plate. You know, a uh, lot of free bases today, but you ran the bases hard today. Yeah, I, I thought we were we were pretty good on the bases, and and we talk about putting pressure on them, right? So we we were able to put pressure on them, and and these good things happen when you put pressure on them. So I'm just happy with how they handled themselves all the way around. A Christian Alter out there, you both of both of us have played the game in the wind, and you don't like the pitching in the wind. Alter gets out there, only gives up one walk, had a little uh, little there in the fifth inning, but overall Christian Alter doing what Christian Alter does. Yeah, I think he finally gave up his first earned run of the year, right on the. Uh, Unfortunate hit by a pitch on a curveball, and then a pass ball, and then a then a fly ball. But yeah, I mean, the wind bothered him a little bit there in the fifth, but he just fills up the zone. It doesn't it doesn't matter. Uh, he just does a great job filling up the zone, and the defense is is ready to play behind him because they know he's going to throw strikes, and they like it, and they want the ball hit to him, and it's it's just good. I mean, six and zero uh, with what a I don't know what his ERA is now, but. That's, that's pretty impressive uh, out of Christian Alter, kind of coming on the scene out of nowhere uh, from last year and, and just super, super proud of him and the work he's put in the offseason to get to this point. So a little bit of a, a dark spot on the day. Uh, early uh, Grove comes out. He was a little gimp. Looked like he was holding his hamstring. Yeah, he got on game. First batter of the game, he got hit. He gets to first, the second. So it'll be the third pitch of the game. He steals second and, and, and comes up lame with his hamstring. Uh, well, I just, at that point, he wanted to go back in, but I don't think it's worth it. You know, we got got a long ways to go. Um, so he's going to ice it on and off the, the whole way to Greenbrier, and he wants to play tomorrow, so we'll evaluate it in the morning. So possibly looking down the road, this could be the 4-1 matchup. If things stay where, where they are, what do you expect? What are you telling your team now after that? I mean, come, as we move through, you know, Spring Mills has played everybody in the EPAC close, and this game kind of got away from them. But, you know, what, what do you tell your team after the game when, th- you know, thinking down the road possibly facing this team again? Yeah, we're not, we're not looking ahead to any of that. We're just look, focusing on the trip to Greenbrier tomorrow and just trying to go, you know, 2-0 tomorrow at Greenbrier. We're not thinking about 1-4, 2-3, or any of that. All right, coach, send it over to the home run hitter. This is the guy you want to talk to. That's right. What's he hitting right now, about 800? <laughs> Feels like it, yeah. Braden Oviedo coming in on and joining us. And Braden, now back-to-back games, you hit a three-run home run. What are you seeing at the plate right now? Yeah, I'm just trying to be aggressive, the most aggressive as I can, not letting any pitches go by, just swinging first pitch, and not getting in uh, bad at-bats. So you, you, the, today the wind's a little little – playing a little funny out yeah. there and uh you know it's hard to play baseball in the wind sometimes especially the wind and the rain but uh early on the spring mills that had you you know with one to one and you know, they played you tight the last time and you know you guys are out there you're kind of the the you're kind of the uh they're, they're playing the underdog role pretty well how are you guys handling being the favorites when you come into these games yeah we're all we all like are hitting really good mm-hmm. we're all one through nine like today put up 17 runs we're just going up there being aggressive not taking pitches I think from the beginning of the season to now, our strikeouts have went from 
decent amount at the beginning to like barely any now. Yeah, you're putting the ball in play, making yeah. the team make make plays. Today it's you put pressure on them. That's right, put pressure on pressure bunts. Uh, so we noticed your team as uh, you know you run the bases well. Uh, you're bunting when you have to. You're bunting one through nine. It's a very unselfish lineup. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Like some of you guys batting, you know, three and four hundred on the year, but then you get the bunt. How, how does that feel? Yeah, it feels good. I mean, just doing whatever to do to make the team do good right. and score runs, move runners, do all the necess- uh, necessities. Did you know it when it left the bat? When it, when you left the bat? No, I did not. I thought it was going to be a double. That was going to be a oh, double. Serious. Well, yeah, you, you both you guys were motoring around the bases and kind of kind of got out of there. And then uh, yeah. so Weber comes up and he gets one to jet stream down there today. So you guys are showing some some power as well. So the score today was seventeen to one, and that's your record. How do you feel about that? I feel really good. Christian did a good job on the mound to keep the runners off the bags, and I think we did really good as a team. All righty. Well, good luck. Have a good trip. Be All safe right. in Greenbrier. Take a trip. Yeah. Thank you, Braden Oviedo, as well as Aaron Byler for joining us here on the Palace Lounge postgame show. The postgame show brought to you by the Palace Lounge on Edward Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg with a full lunch and dinner menu with daily specials and a clean, comfortable atmosphere. Check out the menu on the Palace Lounge. So before Facebook we page. before we roll out, you know we noticed today Coach uh, Bartley wasn't here. I don't think anybody, not a lot of people know, but Coach Bartley's son Austin uh, won his regional in the NCAA boxing match and, and is in the nationals. And he did win last night in Charlotte. And Coach uh, Coach uh, Bo Bartley texted me and said that Austin won. Um, you know he's he's a match or two away from being a national boxing NCAA champion. And wow. so he's down there supporting his son, and he just wanted to let the Bulldogs know that he was listening and we want to give a big shout out to Austin for what he's able to do he's an ex-Bulldog here he's a athlete uh, here in the EPAC and he's doing big things at the uh, collegiate level in the boxing rink uh, that's awesome yeah so congrats to him and uh, back to the game Martinsburg mm-hmm. getting the 17-1 win but Coach Bartley definitely uh, always a good guy to talk to and, and uh, hopefully Austin can go on and win that yeah That'd be cool to see. But uh, 17-1 win for Martinsburg over Spring Mills. Bulldogs do it on just nine hits, six errors for the Cardinals, one run, two hits, six errors for Spring Mills. Our game summary is brought to you by the Mansion Freddy Law Firm in Martinsburg, where it's about seeking justice for you. Go to wvjusticelawyers.com. Wrap it up here at the game stats. Spring Mills held to just two hits. Those hits coming from Swartz which you could even rule that an error possibly on his hit. And then Eichelberger, who definitely had a hit on that double. Yeah. Uh, but Martinsburg giving Swartz a hit on the um, possible error there in, in that uh, at-bat. Anders, two innings of work, five runs, four earned, three walks. Sweeney, one and a third, one strikeout, two earned. Swartz, two-thirds, three earned, one strikeout. Two earned from Butts, three walks, and then Jacoby, two runs, one hit, one strikeout, one walk, and his one inning of work. For Martinsburg, offensively, as I mentioned, nine hits. Those hits coming from Carson Boomer, two of them. Braden Oviedo with two and five RBIs today as well. Christian Alter, one hit, one RBI. Ben Reisenweber, the home run. He also had four RBIs in the game. Owen Rippenfall with one hit. In his two at bats, Henderson with one hit as well, and Everhart with a hit. Home run from Oviedo, home run from Risenweber. Alter goes five innings, two hits, one run, one walk, six strikeouts. Our game stats were brought to you again by Hagerstown Ford, revolutionizing the car buying experience. Visit them online at FordofHagerstown.com. Braden Oviedo, our player of the game, brought to you by WVU Medicine, Berkeley, and Jefferson Medical Centers, leading healthcare here and everywhere. As I mentioned, the home run. Back to back games with a three run home run for Oviedo. Five RBA eyes on the day. That will do it here for us, for Trip Tobin, our color analyst. Dylan Bishop, our cameraman, back in the studio. Colin McLaughlin. I'm Nick Versley, signing off here once again. Your final score, Martinsbury 17, Spring Mills 1. Thank you for joining us. Have a good weekend, everybody. You've been listening to West Virginia High School Baseball. Today's game broadcast has been brought to you by Parsons Ford, Rocks, the Hefley Motor Company, the Wagner Law Firm, Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Companies, the Marius Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, the Skinner Law Firm, 
the Browns Funeral Home and Cremations, Robert Fields and Sons, Orsini's, Carter Myers Automotive, Century 21 Modern Realty Results, The Palace Lounge, Cody's Auto Body, WVU Medicine, Berkeley and Jefferson Medical Centers, Hagerstown Ford, the Berkeley County Health Department, Smallwood and Small Insurance, Mother Shuckers, L.A. Roberts Jewelers, the Dutch Miller Auto Group, and the Mansion Freddy Law Firm. For the continued excitement of high school, college, and Major League Baseball, keep it tuned to FM 106.5, AM 740, Comcast Cable Channel 10, and online talkradio.wrnr.com. All rights reserved.